Hey everyone, welcome to another Saturday. It's uh, Synth Geekery episode 243. Yep, I had to look because uh, I just can't keep count. Anyway, it's nice to have you here. It's a beautiful uh, sort of starting to cool down weather here where I live in Perth, which is one of the most remote cities in the world. So g'day. Uh, yep, we are Australian, um, but it's not an Australian show. This is a multicultural, multi-nation. We, we just... We're, we're like some sort of international place, I think, you know. It's but, the extravaganza. Yeah, let, let's just say let's just say that. Hi to everybody here. Hi to the chatties. Hi to Andy and Ian and Chris. Nice to have you guys here. Uh, so we are traveling the globe. We've got a few. Darren's not going to be with us today. Uh, he sends his apologies, so that's fine. I um, can't remember what he said. But it wasn't anything sort of major, so don't worry. Nothing, nothing to worry about. Um, in that bottom corner, you can see there's a black square. It's not really a square; it's a rectangle. Let's not get let's not get pedantic about maths. Um, if you guys <laughs> want to be in that that shape with four corners, um, you can join us on Zoom. That is Zoom. Uh, let's call it Rhombus. <laughs> no way, don't go there. The link is pinned in the chat. <laughs> Guys, the link is pinned in the chat. Bit.ly forward slash Renzi Zoom. You can join us. Uh, I am waiting to add you to the show. Um, and think of it like a talkback call. You can come and you can go. Uh, you can uh, wipe your feet, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Um, to this uh, particular show this week is kind of... I wouldn't say low key, but it's kind of like we're going to be cruisy today because uh, news is a bit quiet. We've got some some interesting kind of random topics that we're going to sort of cover, and I kind of feel like this is a good show where we can just kind of talk about anything really, as long as it's kind of relatively related to synths. <laughs> That'd as long be good. As it's PC. <laughs> yeah, um, I've got a couple of things. I've got a couple of things that I want to show you guys. Um, I'm sure cool. Ian's got a couple of things he wants to show or talk about. Um, oh yes. So and Chris has definitely been uh, <laughs> playing around with his uh, electronics. Um, he he's he, by the way, if you're just wondering who Chris is, he's the new Dick Smith. That's who he is. <laughs> And for those who, it, it, now, now I wonder if the people overseas, Smith. yeah, exactly. Who knows who who's, Dick Smith who's is? Dick Smith? Yeah. Nah. Well, you guys are going to have to Google Dick Smith now. Hang on, the only uh, Dick Smith I know is a famous makeup effects guy. So he is he is an electronics uh, like ta like Tandy right was in the <clears throat> US right in the UK. All oh, right, yeah. So yeah. he had a massive electronics chain here in Australia, but he's also an, a helicopter pilot. He's a uh, thrill aviation uh, aviation yeah yeah so he's quite a now, quite a sort of talented good, guy i think he's, I think yeah. he's still around he's probably only just still around well, well he's a bit of a political yeah. commentator now and i'm not necessarily yeah. want to be associated with necessarily <laughs> every, everything he's been saying recently about climate change well let's let's yeah. just say you let's just say you like him in the 80s maybe yes that's yeah. it yes yeah he's 80 i modeled now. myself after him he's still he, around in the 80s there you go he's 80 years old uh a lot older than me anyway um, anyway, so nice to have everyone here. Let's go across to, I can't go to Darren, so I think Andy's probably first off the ranks. How are you, mate? How's your week been? Hey, everybody. Yeah. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> yeah, um, it's true. I did get an extra hour of sleep, but I was also up too late, so kind of kind of all evens out. My hair's all messed up and bedhead. <clears throat> but um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good week. Um, didn't, uh, got some software here and there. Got the face plant with the Osmos presets is cool. Works great with the Rolly Seaboard. If you guys haven't tried it, plug and play in Ableton Live, no settings at all. I know Kent's having trouble with it with Cubase and Osmos, but um, great little thing. In fact, I did a little impromptu stream last night with uh, with those presets with the Seaboard. Also played around with um, a Life program. It's a app uh, program combo that Ty Unwin talked about. I think it was PSN show. 291 something like that so finally got that and played around with that I recorded some stuff at Pete's Coffee and some other places and made little beats out of weird noises in this <clears throat> in the uh, establishment so that was fun and I uh, even played with the uh, oddball things little mini controllers I talked about these before but I don't know if I demoed them on camera so I played with those a little bit too so check that out if you haven't seen that uh, also did a fun uh, micro addict stream the other day too with uh 
afternoon, a rare afternoon one, just because what the hell. And I found a, a dinoflagellate, which is the little bugger that causes red tides and makes your shellfish poisonous. So check that little bugger out. It looks like a little Death Star. <laughs> so that's about it. Good to be here. Awesome. Beautiful. Thanks. Nice to have you. Okay. Moving on next would probably be Ian. How are you, mate? Good day. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Good night. Uh, right. Yeah. So I have a busy week, really. Started, started on Sunday with a visit to the London Synth and Pedal Show. I put a video up on that. Uh, that was, that was, it was free, which is nice actually for a, for a synth show. It's pretty packed uh, and um, it was quite a cramped environment as well. I ended up wearing a mask because I wasn't sure about the COVID thing. I, I mean, you know, I tend to wear a mask if it's busy on a tube now um, because I don't want to get it again for the third time. Uh, but yeah, that was quite cool. Uh, and then on Tuesday, I went over to Epsom to see Mr. Spong uh, and to pick up my Lyra 8. Ooh. So wow. uh, this is this is Don Hawkins' Lyra 8 because it's got Don's oh. Lyra on the back of it. Um, <laughs> uh, it's amazing. I love it. It's fantastic. I've, I've, done, I've spent a lot of time with it, but uh, you know, I had I had the app on. I have the app on the organelle, so I, I sort of knew my way around it. Um, it is, and it's. It, I'm, I'm just so chuffed to have it, really. You know, um, and I've been because I've been going to spend quite a lot of time going on tubes and trains. I've been uh, programming my OPZ. In fact, I've got I bought some new knobs because the wow. the main knob kept falling off. So uh, this guy was selling for for ten quid. You could get you know that four knobs and a little stand for it. So. That turned up a couple of days ago, which is much more st much more secure than the the original OPZ knob, uh, and I've I've been doing lots of mainly drum programming on it. But so there I am, sat on a train. I went to Froome on Friday, so there I was, sat there on the way there, all the way back, messing around with it. Fantastic, really. Uh, and I got to see our office in Froome for the first time, mainly just to pick up the post, really. Um, so yeah, no, it's been a pretty full-on week actually. But I mean, I'm I'm sort of quite enjoying living in London for a while. I don't want to mm. live here all, the whole time. But, it's uh, handy. Uh, it is handy. I mean, tonight I'm off to the Royal uh, Festival Hall to an electronic and organ concert. Uh, Jane spotted it this morning, so tickets for twenty quid. Happy days, really. Uh, so that'll be fun. Fantastic. Know. But no, it's great fun. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, we'll move on to the next. This I guess. is. The Whoops, sorry. Ooh. Who is the next? This is Chris. Hi, Chris. Hello. Hello. How are you? How's everyone? Everyone's good. Um, yes. Well, um, I had uh, I had a lovely week because uh, it's happy birthday to me. Happy, oh, birthday. happy birthday. Yes, it was my birthday. Happy birthday. On Thursday. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, had a pretty good day. I've been working on building uh, another story to my modular case there behind me. Well, one with the well, let's point to it. That one there. Yeah. Delay. Okay. That one there. I'm adding another story to it. Just the same thing, uh, four units. Is it science um, fiction, horror? What sort of story? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I think it is going to be a bit science fiction and horror because that's, that's an agile the, story, right? The so. gig I've been on lately, <laughs> yeah. No, it's going to be a bit of a story. Yes. No, in fact, I may even have a camera lined up on it. Do I have a camera lined up on it? Let's have a look. What does it say? It says, computer says no. Uh, oh, yes, I do. Oh, look, it's even almost visible. <laughs> ah! Sorry, I should say, the light is coming back. Yes, it's a bit distorted for some reason, because I probably unplugged it or something. But, um, yes, anyway, a bit of a usual thing. Just, uh, what are we, are we looking at from above or right below, right? or I'm kind of trying to get my bearings here? Oh, so this is like a work in progress. I get it. Right. It is a work in progress. 
Yes, this is a work in progress. Um, so you caught my disease. Hey, <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is, but I think Rance, you see, this is going to be my swan song. I think, I think, I think as much as I've enjoyed doing this, um, I don't think I want to do a lot anymore. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> I I think I've been cured simultaneously by your experience and mine. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so that's why I'm now sort of turning my attention more towards um, perhaps purchasing some cases. So so I've got my eye on some cases. Um, I might be getting two cases um some of it um some of it is because i've just worked out that i needed a different workflow and one of the other things i did this week is you'll be pleased to know as i wrote some music yay uh and having having done that and doing a bit of the module stuff and then thinking about what i'd like to get done and what i'd like to spend more time on i'd rather not spend it time building lots and lots of cases <laughs> this is probably a familiar story to some people um, but oh. I'd rather spend it. I'd rather spend it um, making music and designing electronics for music, things like that. Um, so yes, and now I'm thinking I should just get some pretty serious HP in the studio to go here. I'm going to remodel this section here. Mm. Um, it's going to become a lot more physically stable and a lot more efficient on its space. Um, it is not an open invitation to buy thousands of modules, but that <laughs> ship has already sailed anyway. <laughs> that ship has already sailed anyway, Rads. I'm already, I'm already well and truly in the grips of Eurocrack fever. So <laughs> you can just make your own. I'm though. afraid I'm a goner. So what was that? You yeah, well, that's get help, you know. <laughs> that's the thing. The other reason why the reason why I want to get two cases this may seem like a bit of an overkill, but one case is definitely for putting stuff in it that I buy and with a mixture of stuff that I want to demonstrate or um, some of my own modules I want to test. I also like to have a rack sort of dedicated to testing and everything my stuff because one of the things I'm finding now is that I kind of get good setups going and then I have to break it down to build some more modules to, say, to sell on my Etsy page. So what I really like to do is to separate those two too. So I think the best thing to do is just to have a one a rack that's a little bit more mobile um, than one of the other racks which I want to be a little bit more studio based um, and that will be the one that I will sort of I might do the demos if I'm doing a full camera demo where I'm demonstrating something to a traditional style other times I'll do the demo in my in existing case if it's got really cool stuff going on with it um, so that the two things don't get you know mixed up and i'm not making decisions silly decisions like oh i don't want to do that because i will spoil the case or i'll ruin my patch so yeah i'm starting to think a bit more seriously about that kind of thing um and uh i'm doing okay financially at the moment so um i might as well spend the money i've been saving for most of my life on something i enjoy so and I have been enjoying it this week. It's one of the things about this week is it's been one of those seminal weeks where I've kind of uh, deliberately on my birthday did the two things that I really enjoy. Um, mine, except the electronics, I didn't get to do that. But I did do the music, and that's what's got me excited again about the whole thing. And yeah, I'm rambling. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's all right, mate. Anyway, we, anyway, we are, this, it's just a good show. We are going to talk about music. It? Yeah, we're going to talk yes. about music a bit later. So mm. we can we can visit visit that. There's no problem with that at all. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> I'm probably not going to talk too much tonight because I've been talking all day. Uh, so oh, yeah. uh, I've got probably, you know, what do you call it when you've been talking all day and you've you just your mouth is just sore like it's tired. Down. Not a sore yeah. throat, but it's yeah. just I'm just tired from talking okay. i'm not mm. tired but not as in but i'm just tired of talking type thing anyway um that is everyone no one's joined us in zoom so uh it is pinned in chat i don't know why we're not having much success with zoom maybe i'll just throw it in the bin Aww. um have a cry <laughs> next we're going to going to go to our regular segments before we do that though we're going to say hi to the chatties i did notice uh matt brown was there wagoo future world machines culture of ghosts half god half beast 
uh, ASIO head who's also here with Synchrotron Andy's there um, and I think that was probably the more recent people that have appeared but Future World Machines gets the Guernsey to wear of hey I was kind of other than Rand's I was kind of first person here and uh, and then Lady Aptitude close second so Babs you, you done well you've done well Marky's here he's saying hey up <laughs> big hello to you Marky hey, uh, JP page two is also here um, and I kind of feel like there's a few other like QRDNK um, our mate from Russia who I can't ever pronounce his nick <laughs> sorry I know he's told me like 50 times but I've got to remember like seriously this Getting close to 17,000 people on my channel. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of nicks to remember. Jason is here. Jason Crouch. Hey, <coughs> gang, he says. Um, and I think we'll leave it at that for now. So it's good to have. I think I'm pretty sure I saw Kent. Yes, there he is. He just pops in right at the <laughs> right at the opportune moment. And X101 also does as well. Uh, good on you, Jason, for the four pounder mm, nice and one, 99 mate. pence. Good on you. Uh, there's a little dude walking around with a pipe, I guess, like a you know, like a whistle type pipe thing. I guess that's what it is. Uh, you can't see it on here; it's kind of cropped. It's kind of cropped off. I could probably move it across. Anyway, let's not worry about it. Big thanks to that uh, donation, and that will definitely go to the beer fund. I feel. I think it needs to go to a beer fund or some sort of fund that will take us away from <laughs> the bad things that happen during the day. All right, speaking <laughs> of bad things, why don't we talk about this funny side or not so, or not so. Mm, boys. We have your rack at home, says mum. And at home, we have these things. Technically, would you say they're your rack? Ooh, Euro Mac Mountain, yeah. but they're not really. I mean, they're you compatible, them... no. so they take. <coughs> they say, fit the standard. I'd say you call them Euro Mac, but you wouldn't call them modules. Yeah, there you go. How's that for sitting on the fence? That is sitting on the fence. Um, <laughs> I kind of feel like <laughs> I feel like they qualify. Hmm. I'll tell you why I feel like they qualify because you can power them with. See what I mean about yeah. talking. It's already happening. You can power them with a ribbon cable. So they go onto your bus board. They have patch points. And uh, it makes no, it's no different. There are many modules out there that have like self internal patching on them anyway. So yeah. I think these guys qualify. So yeah. whoever wrote this meme, I know it's funny and everything, but you're wrong. That mum is right. Or mom, if you're from the USA. Um, definitely a, hey, an american that's done this one <laughs> although but wagu said uh it's probably true it's the hertz yeah. volts doll on the k2 right yeah so you gotta remember that but is it all is it all hertz volts on it no or no no it... just just the k2 no no uh, no i mean well, in like i haven't actually got a k2 myself so does it does it like is the whole thing hertz volts and you you have to use some sort of conversion or is there that some, i don't know is there some patchable things on there like, can you use a modulation source into it, for example? Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. Probably. I mean, I have an MS20 Mini, but I haven't hooked it to my Euro rack yet. So. so, yeah, I've got an MS20 Mini as well. So, uh, not an MS20, I've got uh, Model D. So, technically, I'm into Euro rack then. Yep. With this but, argument. Uh, but not yet. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> but Ian, but not yet. Oh, because, so. because yours is still in desktop I haven't mode. Got a, <laughs> Yeah, I haven't got a case. Yes, yeah. exactly. Until <laughs> you've until you've yeah. until you've until opened you've it up, mounted it. Phew, I was yeah. I was worried. You're but, okay. Yeah. You can relax, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, but look, the good news is, is this guy has room down the left hand side of his cat and his yes, Model D, yeah. and he could put a dis thing in there. He could put a uh, he could put a hertz per volt to volts per octave thingamajingamy. -jingamy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, just quickly pop on over here to, to thank Future World Machines for the five pounder, and he's and he's also adding it for the beer fund. That's that's incredible, mate. That is absolutely brilliant. So now we've got almost ten pounds, 
we could probably almost buy a pint with that almost um yeah keep going right what else have we got we have this one uh this one was kind of weird it was like uh someone who you know how you get these kind of weird people on facebook who want to add you i don't know if this is actually facebook this mm. like, might be something else but um instagram. martin gore instagram hello this is martin gore depeche mode i lost my credit card so can you send me money so i can buy a new synth for the new album and then someone goes what understand me oops did i speak like that no, <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> yes, yes i i had to risk myself to <laughs> I had to, I've had to restrain myself too. I don't want to use any stereotypes or anything, but I think that maybe someone is working or working up to working in a call centre in a certain country in the sort of mm. Asia region. We, we either get fake Martin mm. Gore, get Rafa Sayers <laughs> bothering you. Oh, poor so. Rafa! I'm, I'm not yeah. going to bite. I'm not going to bite in. I've completely decided that I'm not going to bite into the Rafa because I think the guy doesn't deserve the crap that he's been getting. He doesn't uh, deserve all the crap. He did create his own monster. I have to say. He, well, to he, he 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 probably did. should. Yeah. He probably shouldn't yeah. have four thousand different synth groups and then cross post to every single one of them with the same post. Yeah, and That's constantly pester you and have different accounts and all that. It's just come on, man. Yeah. Just... but I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw him because he might be yeah. like I think right now he's probably talking to a lawyer <laughs> and going for a class it's action. Fine, but I mean, I I didn't say anything libelous so, or, or slanderous or what anything. Mm. Anything. You just gave him advice. <laughs> you gave him advice. Um, eh. Oh, we've got to cross over to the chat mm. again. We've we've had an, another beautiful donation from Mr. Spong. Oh, what a oh, lovely Mr. man. Spong. Should even get a Wonderful centipede man. legless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the to? highlight of my week was, was well, the highlight of my week was going in Kent's Kent's attic. Oh, uh, wow. we, we'll talk about. We'll definitely talk about that in a minute, uh, Ian, because I do yes. want to. I do want to hear the goss. So, thank yes, you, Kent. Want to hear that was that. very, very generous of you. And I think we could probably almost buy a couple of pints now, um, mm. and share them around. I'll have to go get. I'll have to go to the fridge and get some beers. Right now, next midlife crisis. You can oh. only choose one to be your entire personality. Mm. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm going to go bottom right. I'm gonna go. Well, I've already got. I've already got top left. So I just think that bottom right one just personifies me in this channel because apparently yeah, we're all of... old here. Apparently, yeah. Yeah. Let's put the hat on. Hey, speak up. Um, what? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> there we go. You could, you could, you could pass as some kind of hipster with a nice large beard and that little cap. You'd probably come. See, synth seekers with me. Synth seeker in chat. Hundred percent hat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good on your hat. Nothing wrong with a good hat. It's, uh, it's a Peaky Blinders hat, isn't it? Uh, it is a bit, yeah. It's, I like it's a little it. Like the Jamiroquai hat too, isn't it? So, <laughs> no, it's mm, no one's, not quite no one's picked. Enough. Nobody has picked modular. Nobody in the chat. Everyone's gone with the hat mm. or something else. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm grown. I'm grown to legend. Look at that. He's given us five pounds. See you oh, in the man. catch up, so matey. Uh, pity you can't hang around. Um, no. Hopefully, you don't miss out on anything, but catch ups is always good. Good on you, mate. Thanks for the five pounder. All right, so I, I don't know if I'd just buy an engine because I kind of feel like. <laughs> yeah. That does seem a bit like, you know, surely. putting the, the horse before the, the cart before the horse, doesn't it's it? It's a bit like having a whole bunch of Euro modules and you've got no case to put them in. <sighs> kind of. Maybe I resemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> that was not aimed at you, Chris. I you're know. Just, you're just feeling guilty all, over, all around the place right now because you've I, got I have all enough, these projects going I on. I have plenty enough <laughs> guilt for, to put on myself and I don't need anyone else giving me more. Thank you very much. <laughs> I am really liking that coffee, coffee racer bike, though. I wish my it, is, <laughs> it is a nice bike. I know a guy's nice got bike. one of them. Say, that's a nice bike. I kind of feel like if you were to ride one of those, it's kind of like almost an invitation for the cops to go, hey, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I'm pulling you over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one of those type bikes. Right, what else we got? When you tell vintage modular synth owners, you can get the same sound with a cheap VST plug-in. <sighs> <laughs> uh, analog has more warmth. <laughs> Digital is cold. <laughs> and it's inhuman. 
Like your soul. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> aliasing. <laughs> yes. All those little voices in our heads. <laughs> uh, I just remember some of these arguments about 15 years ago. And oh, yeah. None, and none of, them were, <laughs> none of them were accurate ever. Mm. <laughs> all we need now is uh, Ken Flux Pierce to come on the show and yes. tell us all about the difference between analog and digital because he loves it. Yes. Um, guys in chat, tell us what your favorite meme is for the week. Uh, is it, uh, what did we have? Let me can refresh our memories because it was such a long time ago that I did it. Was it the Euro rack? So far, was ago. it the Martin Gore? Uh, no, it did actually say Martin, not Martian, but it did say Martin as in, uh, there was Martin Gore and then. M R T I N underscore Gore underscore real. <laughs> yeah, and then there's real the mid- followers. Then there's the midlife crisis, uh, and everyone's going Peaky Benders, uh, and then <laughs> then there's digital it's good, uh, with hello aliasing. <laughs> so yeah, let us know as they're popping in. Um, go make music. We don't worry. We we will. We will, Mister Seeker. <laughs> we will um, indeed. Midlife crisis for sure, says Q I D and K. I think you think the music you're opening track today was cool. I don't know that one. That was a good Genesis. Genesis. Yep. Yeah. Jinx. Yeah. Okay. Well done, Chris. You got that one. Um, for some reason, that seems to be good a pretty fan. popular track. I don't know why. Uh, it has got polyrhythms in it. Good. That could that could be one of the reasons. Yeah. Uh, which is. It seems to be one of the little things that I tend to do with a lot of music I make. It does little polyrhythms everywhere. Um, but anyway, right. So I'm th- I'm saying mm. midlife crisis is probably one that one this week. Okay. Yeah. Um, but There's if something it was in there for everyone, if it yes, there is. If it was midlife crisis, which one? Ah. Oh, it's got rhythm. It's the bike every time. The bike. In fact. Andy Sink, yeah, Sink I don't, I don't have agrees. The it's bike, the bike. Gene. Oh, well, then if Andy says it is, it must be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good on you, Andy. Yeah, you, uh, what do you mean, you, you Chris? What do you mean you don't have the bike gene? I don't have the bike. Everybody's gene. got the bike my, gene. My, you just haven't got a bike. I, I, I've been around people who ride bikes, and I just don't yeah. have it. You know, yeah, you, I, you, you meant the pulse is meant to race when you're near a bike if you're a bike person so. I've when I was about didn't, 15 Chris I, I'm with you mate when I was about 15 I pits, picked up bits of a motorcycle rider off the, the highway up the road <laughs> from us yeah and, um, and that was a pretty um, good introduction that? to say yeah. no because basically all you are is a bag of meat and bone and there's nothing oh, stopping yeah. you from falling off that thing at 100 miles an hour well uh, we used to have a saying we used to sorry we used to have a saying we used to we used to, sorry, Ian. We used to have a saying when we said that uh, uh, if you got a motorbike, it'd be like, oh, how much? you must be a temporary Australian. Yeah, <laughs> temporary Australian. <laughs> I try not to go too fast. I don't go. In fact, I don't go. These days, I don't go fast. Guys, let's just stop the press. Matt Brown, he wants Ooh. the Eurorack one. Ooh. He's saying it's 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 it was too late. You, it, it's Eurorack. Matt, you can have it. You can have Eurorack. Ooh. We'll let you have That's that right. one, mate. It's your day today. Oh, God. Good on you, mate. <laughs> right. Um, By the way, you're talking about bikes and stuff, those e-bikes those guys are riding at high speed with no helmets, they're asking for trouble. Oh, yeah. You yeah, guys have those around? Yeah. Going yeah. really fast? Mm. Yeah. They are definitely, they hit a car this day, They're definitely temporary yeah, humans, there's, those there's loads, Actually, there's loads yeah. around London. You know, yep. Absolutely loads. The, mm. the, um, the scooters. We, you know the scooters? Yeah. Scooters. Yeah. 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 They, scooters are one yeah. thing with the e-bikes. The guys are going really fast. No, but those scooters, mm. they, they just... I don't know if you, you guys, when you were kids, you would have ridden a scooter, right? You know how mm. bad those yeah. things are. Yeah. At everything. Yeah. They're to bad steer. at control to steer. And I know these like electric Stopping. scooters yeah. are a lot better because they've got big wheels in them and stuff. But still, these guys mm. are going like 60, 70 K an hour on these things. <laughs> it's a lot just, of drunk too. It, it's, scooters. <laughs> it's insanity. Yeah. Anyway, not my problem. Their problem. <laughs> And yeah. this might be your problem. It's news time. <clears throat> yes. Have a look at that little pedal on the oh, yeah. top left-hand <laughs> corner. <laughs> what I love about this, yes. though, is I chose this photo off of their website because this is the only photo that the Japanese company, Zoom, that shows it used with the synth. All the other yes. 
marketing about this new had all the ms70 cdr plus really the only thing that's new about this is the plus symbol no no just kidding there are some new things mm. about it. uh there's new chorus delays and reverbs in here um so don't worry it is a multi-stomp now this i don't know if you guys know much about the ms70 cdr if you don't you'll probably quickly one. find yeah. out that it is probably the most probably favored synth multi mm. effects pedal for synthesizer people out there because it's, yeah, it's you can layer it's cheap mm. it's actually pretty decent the some, algorithms are good it's it's got got filter it's on board filter switch with it yeah yeah so i find it a bit noisy but uh it's so that you always have to say stick something at the end of end of it but i think it's pretty cool i mean for for a hundred quid or what it was i think mine was 90 when i bought it um mm. it's great it's really mm. really good okay well let's have a look at this this is vimeo so i don't know how we're going to play this we'll see if it works is that working yeah. yes he's moving very slowly oh no he's moving <laughs> so this is just guitars guys sorry it's very quiet isn't it Make that louder. There we go. How do you press pause on a Zoom video on a uh, <laughs> Vimeo video? Anyway, uh, it's you can't click on it. That's that's for sure. Uh, where were we? We were here, and then we were. Let's see if we can get it back. Hey, discussions about this. I mean, who here? I know, Ian's already told us he's got one. Yeah. Who yeah. Are here? I think Andy, you've got one, right? You've got an yeah, MS one, seventy yeah. yet. Yeah. One or two. I might have two of them. Yeah. CDR, I don't. Yeah. I don't have the seventy. I've got the one hundred, the Bluetooth one. Uh, which got, is pretty much I've the same. Got a 70, I've got a 70. 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, 70. <laughs> that wasn't me. That was sorry. Him. That was this guy. <laughs> it happens to be plumbed in. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, okay, so Chris, tell us what you think of your 70. Well, I'm probably the worst person to speak to. Because <laughs> as usual, I've underutilized mine. I've <laughs> underutilized mine. Uh, but I. It's one of those cases where uh, when I heard how it was you, other people use it, I was like, I need to have that. I need to have that in my life. So I got one and because they're kind of cheap and cheerful, but they're really, really quite, they love sound lovely. And um, I mm -hmm. haven't had done as much programming as I'd like to do, but you, geez, you can do a lot of, do a lot of customization, a lot of programming of change. Did you hack yours? Pedals. No, I haven't hacked mine. I haven't even hooked it up to the right software to do the, the hacking and the, you know, the patch yeah, ordering and stuff like that. I haven't like done that. that either. Yeah, I, 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 it has been discussed and have been given all the links and all that kind of good stuff. I just never got around to it. But I do love the sound. I wonder of if you it. can and hack mine as well. Are. It's it's definitely one of those things where, um, when I'm doing modular noodles and things like that, being it just having it there. Um, being able to select a good program pretty quickly and it's like it just works so it's and it sounds really good so yeah it's quite it's 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 one of those it's one of those pedals where you kind of go is it that's all coming out of that little thing it's, it's a that kind of, for a pedal yeah, yeah which, which reminds yeah. which reminds me of the um because I've I've had one zoom effect 15 years ago and back then zoom effects were pretty ahead of their time and that that was something battery operated and again it was a classic case of how do they fit all that in one little box so yeah fond memories and um when i heard about this one i went yeah i'll get one of those so yeah no and uh, no problems with it no issues with power supply no problems oh it takes a little bit of um 
a little bit of fiddling to deal with the using it in a effects return chain. I found that it was so sort of orientated towards as an insert effect, particularly for a guitarist, that sometimes it's yeah. kind of a, a bit <coughs> of a mind bend to try and work out how to stop it from adding. Am I listening to, to the chorus plus the original? And is that phasing coming from the original plus the chorusing because it's got, oh, I don't know. So it took me, that did confound me for a little while, but I sort of worked it out. So again, something you could probably work out by reading the manual, but that's, if anything, criticism would be is that it needs to have come, I think, with a few more send oriented effects to really be useful for a, for synthologists like us. So, yes. Mm. So that's nice. Nice. I mean, but I think there's definitely a, there is a, there definitely is a, worth reprising. Sorry. Yeah, there is a limitation on how how much how many sort of programs you can use because I, I I remember seeing I I haven't used it for a while obviously because it's packed away, um, but I remember sort of you know being quite surprised that you know I I put I'd put three 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 in a chain and then I'd run out of memory, and that you've got to be oh. careful what you you do with that. I'm, I'm assuming that the new one. Has dealt with that issue. Yeah, probably doubled everything. Yeah. That's a good thing. It's so doubled cheap to buy multiples and chain them together physically. Yeah, I mean that. that <laughs> yeah, I've, I could have done that, I've yeah. seen a lot of people with a pair of them. Yeah, oh. that seems to be yeah. quite a common mm. technique. Yeah. And, well, if you do want to find out, quarters, but they, they make other stuff that's good, like drum machines. So if you see the RT or two two three and the street box and stuff. They made little drum machines. For yeah, all. I had a, an MR MR eight, which was a drum machine bass thing and an eight track recorder on them yeah. i've got i've got a, exactly, an, an yeah. r12 uh is it r12 uh, no r24 which is brilliant i use that for emoms to record ultra yeah, track cool. emoms. Yeah. And, yeah. and of course what's got a lot what's of kept them stuff. they have and what's been keeping them going for the 15 years and i forgot about them and then they returned is those little recorders that was kind yeah, of what yeah. they've made their bread and butter on i've now, got a h2 but, as well yeah, and greatly. That's what the main I don't own days, one, yeah. but I've, yeah. I've, if I ever wanted one, that particular thing, that was the go-to one to get get a Zoom mm. H series. Mm. So, mm. You, if you're interested in getting a seventy CDR Plus, um, they have updated it, and um, I don't know if it's better than the old one, um, but obviously Zoom it's, think it is. Yeah, it's a bit pricier, isn't it? Is it about mm. £170, mm. Pounds, something like that? Yeah, I thought it was a bit pricey as well. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, you can still mm. get the 70 CDR in various yeah. places as mm. well. So That's that, interesting. Uh, we're, we might be at that point in time where it might be a good idea to rush out and get the old one still. Mm. Yeah. Um, but there are people out there who will go, no, 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 I need the new one because the new one's better mm. and bigger and faster and stronger. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Just stay away from the well, Zoom Arc. That was a terrible product. So, <laughs> oh, oh God, that thing! I had that thing. I'm so glad to get rid of it. Bloody thing! <laughs> so, chatties, uh, they're all kind of talking about what they like and don't like, and some people are saying hmm. I don't have one, and yeah. So it's it's a bit of a mixed bag. It's pretty similar. I don't actually have the 70. I've got another one. Like I said before, it's a hundred. MBT, I think it's called. It's the Bluetooth. Bluetooth it's pretty one? much exactly yeah. the same. You can get the same algorithms. Um, there was a stage yeah, earlier in the same. piece where you couldn't, and they were completely mm. different. Mm. And then Zoom decided, "Oh, we'll share the algorithms around with yeah, all the fine. various models." Yeah, um, and made them free as well, which ended up being pretty cool. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, go check out the Zoom pedal because uh, mm. I do kind of feel it is a synth effects pedal at heart. Oh, yeah. it is definitely. Yeah. In fact, well, I'm not used to it. Just. Out. just yeah, just Google. You can't hit those buttons with the shoes. No, so I don't. It's, it's better with the keyboard. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think that was built for a. Key, yeah, anyway, let's not mm. let's not rubbish them too much. Do make some good stuff. <laughs> okay, next one is kind of news, yeah. but it happened a long time ago, so this is kind of weird. But let's talk about it, and that's this. What you're looking at here is it's written in French, but this is a citation from a cop for the famous Michael Gis for going down in uh, Paris and recording stuff where in places where he probably shouldn't have. And this is in the 1980s. <laughs> now, if you guys know anything about Michael Gies, he did a lot of sampling and he did a lot of recording and this was what he recorded. 
Do you guys remember what that's from? Yeah. Crickets? Crickets? Jean-Michel Jarre. Yeah, Jean-Michel Jarre. Les... Les... <laughs> Chant Magnetiques. Oh, Magnetic yeah. Fields. Part oh, four. Yeah. Magnetic Fields, part four. That's cool. the train going past. Uh, and oh. he got he got in trouble for it with the cops. <laughs> <laughs> and this yeah. and this came across um, on social media, and I thought, wow. wow, that's a great little bit of history there. <laughs> <laughs> that I never knew about. I actually never knew he got in trouble for it. And obviously, we were listen, we'd listened to these samples, uh, and lots of artists yeah. have sampled, and they've, there's some famous samples. There's like the the famous, uh, what do you call it? Phlegm coughing up from Pink Floyd at the start of Wish You Were Here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Um, and so there's, you know, and, and these are famous. And this train, I definitely mm. feel, is like probably one of the most famous train yeah, you know, because it was mm. very, very early '80s. I think this one came out. So, no, it's a date on here anyway. So you can, you know when it was. There you go. Bet you didn't know that. Um, okay, nope. and good on you, Michael, for you know taking one for the team. I reckon taking a <laughs> citation. Suffering for your art. <laughs> yes, me <you> like that. <laughs> it was a good recording, though. Mm-hmm. All right, mm-hmm. next we have this, <laughs> which has been a little no, bit controversial this week. <coughs> yes. So let's have a little look at the vid. Um, I don't know. I don't really know what to say about this, but we'll do this part. We'll just play the first intro. Oh, bit. The no. Van Gogh replay, and it's a synth sequencer and arpeggiator that can sound like this. It can sound like this. It can also sound like this. Wow. And this. And That's it can also bad. sound like this. Replay. Guys, I kind of feel like there's a meme coming out soon where <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just going to have her going, yeah. it's going to sound like this. It's going to sound like this. this. It's going to sound like this. Yeah. And it's just going to keep repeating. Like, do you remember? Yeah. Um, Lego Velt when he did the synthesizer tour and there was that famous video where it was just him saying the word synthesizer about 50 different times. Oh, yes. <laughs> it oh, was right. like the best. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see this one turning it into. Um, yes. By the way, it yes. doesn't yes. sound, yes. Like it this. does not sound like her harp at all. And um, <laughs> also, I, mm. I, I think there was only a few samples in that intro where uh, she didn't use effects, or they didn't use effects anyway. Mm. Mm. Um, anyway, let's talk about this one, um, the Von Von Gogh replay. Um, Vogon. I would have called it Vogon. I know Robbie yesterday was, kept calling it Vogon, but it is, for me, it's the Vogon, isn't it? It's from Hitchhiker's Guide <laughs> to the Galaxy. That's right. Exactly. The, the Vogon. Yes. Vogon. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Billy, you're not going to give us some Vogon poetry, are you? Hmm. Let, yes. let me That's let me just read. <laughs> this is off their website. I'll read this because I like to tell you. I like to share with you guys what the marketing speak is, and we can pick it apart. It is a polyphonic synthesizer with multi-mode arpeggiator inspired by the Roland Juno and the Korg Poly Six of the of the nineteen eighties. Like Poly Six. Um, <laughs> okay, it kind of did have some Juno-ish, you know, resemblance, I guess. Uh, anyway, it's designed to embody the vintage character whilst utilizing modernity. There we go. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting myself some modernity. <coughs> and versatility <coughs> of form. Plastic. Replay it's has six game. voices. It's a virtual analog, and it emulates the organic response of an analog circuit, enabling you to create a diverse range of sounds from rich pads to vibrant leads and snappy arpeggios. So it's a VA. Um, that's a nice way yeah. of saying VA. Uh, mm. It has, um, they they say it has got style and function, and it has a slim footprint with 22 dedicated sound controls and a two and a half octave keyboard of genuine Cherry MX keys. Now that's the bit that I kind of feel is interesting, that you've made a musical instrument with a IT uh, <laughs> mechanical device. Nice, mm-hmm. uh, IBM MX keyboards, anyone? Right. Uh, the intuitive format and sleek design encourages an immersive, hands-on approach to create. Look, this just goes on and on and on and on and on yeah. and on and on. But um, let's just quickly run through the features. Uh, 32-bit audio, 22 dedicated sound controls. I said that before. Four oscillators, 
waveforms, not for oscillators, for oscillator waveforms, and seven low frequency or seven LFOs, let's just say that, with uh, waveforms. So it's seven LFO waveforms, not seven LFOs. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> like, it's, it's, this is tricking me already, but the way they're saying yeah. this. Two and a half octaves of genuine tree, I said that before, installed with hot swap sockets so you can replace the switch with alternative action. So could, you guys know when you're into gaming keyboards and stuff, you've got cherry blues and cherry reds and browns and blah, blah, blah. So I'm guessing that you can you can do that with this. Yeah. There is a web interface for managing the presets and accessing extended parameters. So it uses web MIDI. I don't like that, guys. Um, mm -hmm. So whoever's developing synths, please don't use web because it, it, it's going to always be um, a time-limited feature. It's yep. Because your browser cannot do um, things that was invented back, you know, 30 years ago, uh, or maybe not that far back, maybe 25 years ago or something like that. When, Like, for example, have you guys tried to use Netscape or something like that from the early days, mm -hmm. okay? So these things are not going to be long-term. <clears throat> They're going to be short-term. No. So this is not a long-term product. You, if you're going to have that as a platform to edit. You mean in sort of inbuilt obsolescence type? Inbuilt issue. obsolescence, yeah. Um, mm. One of the benefits of hardware is it's hardware mm. and it will never ever need to be updated. It will always work the way it last was when you turned it on. If as you long start, as the electricity doesn't change. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> uh, God, are you, watch, are you guys watching that um, Netflix series, the three body, what's it called? Three. Oh, body? not yet. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. I mean, my lads have been talking about the books for years. The yeah, books oh, the books. The brilliant. books are great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's so, all about know, that's all that's about it. physics being thrown out the window. That that mm -hmm. whole series. So yeah, um, this <laughs> definitely isn't anything about physics being thrown out the window. Um, it's a oh, VA with cherry keys. It looks kind of. I don't know if I like the look of it. It looks very plain. I mean, everybody's. I mean, I, I watched uh, Sarah Bell Reed's video, which is quite in depth on it actually uh, I have to say none of the sounds that she she produced I mean she does more experimental music anyway with it uh, but none of it sounded exceptional or something I, I couldn't have got from elsewhere everybody's saying about the the fact that you, you can't tell on the picture but there is writing on there but nobody can read it yeah in a, exactly in <laughs> you know? yeah uh, I mean that it's I'm, white that's on a bone, massive right? so, yeah. yeah that's a massive own goal Really, you know, at least make it a, a color where you can. It's an know. own goal. I Black love would that. have been fine. Black what writing on on the bone color would have been, would have been fine. Um, Roland put red writing on black with the JDXI. It's impossible to read as well. So, yeah. and the fingerprints. <laughs> it's, it's not the first yes. time. Yeah, exactly. It's not the first time. I'd I'd like to play with it too. Um, it, I didn't get the. I mean, having having owned a Poly Six back in the day and knowing the Poly Six sound pretty well. Because I, I edit for doesn't ages. Doesn't sound anything uh, like a Poly Six. It doesn't sound anything like that. In nah. fact, you know, because my main criticism of the the Mod Wave when it came was it Mod Wave, which was the one that, that came out as meant to be like the Poly Six that Korg did, and that didn't sound mm. like a Poly no, Six. No, that didn't sound like a Poly Six either. Um, um, so I, it's, it's expensive for what it is. Um, I'd like to play with it. Eight ninety nine, by the way. Uh, and yeah. Um, I mean, it, the, the price is ridiculous for what it is, I think. You know, mm. there's so many other things out there for 900 quid that you, the, where you feel you get good value for money. I just don't think it's good value for money. Although I would like to play with it. I All might right. change my mind if I got my hands on it. It's probably so a, they're out there. It's probably a hipster. It's a hipster product, right? It, it looks like a hipster thing, doesn't it? I'm, and I it looks say, like a prototype. I'm, I, yeah. <laughs> I bloody hate the keys. The key. I mean, I don't like the keys on an OP1. I'm not a huge fan of the keys on the... <laughs> The OPZ, but at least you mm. know you get around that. Yeah, I mean it's it's horrible the keyboard, you know. Yeah, and I wish I wish companies would stop doing this. There's so many there's so many synths out there that were these crap keyboards. You know, the one advantage of the OP1, although it doesn't have expression, is those are uh, military grade switches. So those keyboards. Oh yeah, they are. Time. Yeah, it takes a lot to break one. Hmm. Well, you're playing music with your fists. Yeah, I don't know, guys. It's it's not going to end up in my studio. I'm sorry. I've got <laughs> plenty of VAs already. Uh, in fact, I just pressed. Yeah. 
Also, I don't know this Cherry MX thing. I'm not. I'm out of the loop. That's what a the hell's the Cherry MX thing? I'm. I don't the get keys. that. I've don't never know. heard of that. that Switch out keys thing. Just a... I yeah. Rand, Rand's and I know Cherry as a brand, presumably from IT, because they've been around for donkeys. I mean, why would you? Why would you want to change the keys? Oh. Well, Cherry are German. You know? Yeah, um, that's the hipster part. <laughs> yeah. I, I used to actually when it's I used like, to sell like you know desktop mm-hmm. computers for corporate. You know, this is a long time ago. We're talking about twenty years ago. I used to actually buy the Cherry brand keyboards, keyboards. for my clients mm-hmm. because. If you bought Microsoft keyboards or if you bought uh, other branded mm. keyboards, they would come back broken and you would have to repair them under warranty. It was a pain in the ass. So we used to always just get them cherries because you'd never see them come back. Like those, um, the types of industries that we have in my city are mainly industrial <laughs> mining. Those guys completely crashed mm. the shit out of computer keyboards. So in that sense, it is quite a sound idea to put the keys to- as something strong it's, like that, but I don't know it's if a bit, it's a musical thing. No, I don't think it's a musical. Does that mean this thing, thing goes ch-ch-ch-ch-ch when you press the yeah. keys? Yeah, yeah. they do. Oh, yeah. That stuff. They do, yeah. and it's it's a bit like saying you know it's a bit like a cherry's a bit like the fatar of computer keyboards in a way. It's like yeah. the mechanism oh, okay. that you, when you want to say, oh, it yeah, comes yeah. with a genuine cherry well, mechanism. Are, my keyboard here has got cherries on it. Just next to a guy playing a mechanical keyboard at work, and you want to strangle him. It's like super noisy. <laughs> yeah, I get told to shut up yeah. if I if I'm up late doing emails yeah, and stuff. It's obnoxious. Close your yeah, door. Click clacky, click clacky, click clacky. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the feel mm. though. It, I mean, it is a really nice feel, but I it don't, is very. I don't mm. feel like that. I get the a, feedback. That's part not of a it, musical a, feel. No, no, it's more of an IT thing. That's yeah. kind of you know, it's, it's, a, ty- it's a typing style. feel. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is definitely a typing feel. We used to sell a lot of Cherry keyboards, the programmable kind. So that was the other thing Cherry did is they did um, mm. replaceable button yep. transfers for like point of sales and things like that. That was a uh, place where Cherry was really big and that was where I mostly had exposure to them as being, you know, generic keyboard manufacturer. So I mean, this is a bit this, closer to this. This stuff's going back a bit, but in the, mm. in the early days when they had uh, wireless mice and um, if you had like a massive sort of room with you know 30 40 users sitting in there all different computers and they all had wireless mice then you would get like the radio frequencies would you know run out of channels basically yeah. and not everyone's mouse would work <laughs> and so cherry <laughs> were one of the first companies in the world to come up with uh, a solution for that and for probably for a brief moment maybe a year maybe 18 months they were the only company that you could you could put like wireless mice in a mass mm. user sort of environment, and then eventually right. everyone else caught on and made their own mm. and you know got around the patents and all that, <laughs> that sort of <laughs> stuff. Yes. So Cherry been good not just with keys but with other things as well. I mean, apparently the build quality, the actual chassis quality is quite strong, quite high because it's metal. But yeah. uh, I think on PSN last night the guys were saying that the the switches. The are switches plastic. are plastic. Yeah, yep. that's horrific. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, but, why would you do oh. that if you've got, you know, you've got a metal chassis? Then you know, spend but a that, bit more money and put. That's a commensurate to the could... um to the original computer keys. They're plastic as well. Yeah, um, I guess okay. so. But they're not. Then the mechanism's different. I mean, the forces on them are completely different. Mm. On a. Mm. Oh yeah. Are the pot to, shafts almost plastic though? Switch. Is that mm. is that metal? I don't know. Don't, don't get me started on you, plastic this. pot shafts. Oh my god! <laughs> I'll, just, I'll start ranting about Moog in a minute. Oh dear! There you yes. go. Hmm. You're just trying to trigger me, Andy. I know you are. Well, I know you know, <laughs> right? I you also. The, the... <laughs> well, yeah, cog. <laughs> mm. Yeah, everybody yeah. at some level has the cheap plastic ones. So. All right, let's move on to the yeah. next. Um, I, I mean, I know you know a lot of you guys watch PSN, and it was on there last night. But mm. I, I, I needed to talk about this I'll because be... of my mm. and and I knew Chris would bite into it as well because of our IT slash engineering background. Mm. You know, we we do have a little bit of uh, skin in the game when it comes to Cherry MX. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you. Yeah, but poor old Ken, poor old Ken hung himself last night when he saw this. He said, oh, he's would... just said, "Where's my role?" Yeah, that... I would not yeah, that be was... surprised. I would not <laughs> be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, coming to a dumpster near you soon. Let's move on yeah. because, you know, I can't even read the print on there. Let's move on. 
The next thing is this, and actually, I didn't even know about this, and it's actually really good that Robbie's just jumped into chat. Fail Muzo, if you guys are wondering yeah. who Robbie is. He's actually one of the hosts of PSN. If you don't know that, go check out ProSynth Network. They're a great channel, much better than mine. Mine's crap compared to theirs. Um, anyway, yeah, this, the is the, this is the AN1X editor that's just popped out on GitHub, and it's free, and you can get it running on a Mac. In fact... Let's have a look. It's running on my Mac. Yay. Here's what I preferred earlier. This is it running on the <laughs> Mac. Um, I literally downloaded it about 10 minutes before the show aired. And uh, I haven't got it to work yet. But I mean, the actual software is working. But I haven't got it to work because I don't have an AN1X. Uh, I have half an AN1X. I've got an yeah. AN200. So apparently, you can get this thing to work with an AN200. I just haven't got it worked working just yet. Um, so I've got MIDI in and MIDI out plumbed. Um, so you know, it's making sounds. Okay, the clan works with the PLG board, so. All right, and I've got the synth channel happening on MIDI channel one. So that's the synth. MIDI channel one, you've got different, um, this is multi-timbral, so you've got different, uh, you've got rhythm one, rhythm two, rhythm three, and a whole bunch of other crap in here. But, I mean, we can access those via Ableton, uh, so we can change the MIDI channel here. If I do this, you guys can see me changing the MIDI channel. Look at that, isn't that nice? Changing it to two. Zoom and enhance. Changing it to one. Three. Four, I think, is the maximum. Yeah. So it depends on the patch you're on. Um, yeah, there you go. Anyway, um, let's go back to here. So the years ago, I used to use this thing called XG Edit. And there was a little plugin for the AN200 that actually still works on Windows 10. I don't know if it works on Windows um 11 or anything like that but it worked on windows 10 up until i don't know last time i used it <laughs> i don't know how long ago that was probably <laughs> when i did the repair video of the an200 which would probably be getting on a bit now um mm. but anyway so xg edit had a little an200 plugin and you could um connect it up via midi and you could edit the sequences and the patterns and all sort of stuff on here but what this is um, from github by the way if anyone's wondering how do I get it you can find this via the uh, blog article that I release uh, at the end of the show there's links to the github that you can download it or you can just probably google it you'll probably find it pretty easy um, what I was saying before is uh, what I liked about this is that you've got all of this patch editing side of stuff here it's actually pretty cool so you can change there's different scenes right with an one x uh well the the what do you call it the pg what's that the chip that the an one x is and the an2 an200's got it's the same chip um so you can change all this stuff poly mono um, I don't think this is actually working for me, though, on the AN200. So if someone can point me in the right direction one day, that's pretty cool. Um, but all of this stuff is actually really cool. And if you do have an AN1X, you can use this as a patch um, manager. And you can, uh, there's a video where a guy is actually showing this better than what I'm doing, because he actually has an AN1X and it works. Uh, you can download patches off your AN1X, save them in here you can edit them in here in real time in fact when you're in these scenes and you're actually touching the the knobs and sliders and stuff on your an1x it actually shows them moving at the same time on here so it's it's literally cool. programmed properly it's not one of these things that you have to yeah. upload and download and upload that sort of stuff mm. which i think is really really handy old school yeah <laughs> uh, it's um, like an article the guys say they got an1x edit to work on windows 10 but so you can still use it on a, on a Windows site, at least. Well, Robbie's just said in chat, I don't know if you noticed, but he said it's confirmed that it works on Windows 11 as well. Cool. Um, so, yeah. Um, PLG150-AN. Uh, there you go, Robbie. Well done. So a great mm -hmm. Yamaha chip that was mm -hmm. uh, in 
You know? The, the thing is that with the mm. AN200, it's I think it's five voices, if I remember rightly. And with the AN1X, I think it's 10 voices. I think that's right. Um, Darren's not here to double check because he's mm. got an AN1X. Yeah. Um, he's the guru, yeah. But that's pretty cool. Uh, I definitely think I will um, get it working pretty soon, I think. Um, because, like I said before, those other editors that were around, you know, 10, 15 years ago, they didn't quite have this sort of level of uh, sound design. Let's let's put it that way. They were more, for, especially for the AN200, not, I'm mean, not talking about the AN1X, but for the AN200 owners, they were more, a lot of the editors were more to do with the way that you're managing the sequences and programming the sequences, because it, it is a groove box, right? Whereas this is more about sound design, and I've always wanted to fiddle with the sound design because they are, it's actually a really powerful, uh, we'll call it a VA. I, I'm I think it's a pretty pretty sound name for it. It's, I'm pretty sure it's a VA, virtual analog. Oh, it's a VA, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it has PCM. That's what, kind of where I'm going with it, uh, Andy. It does have PCM. Or, what's it called? AEW something, AWM. something. Yeah, the AWM sound engine in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, go get yourself an QAN1X editor. Uh, version 1.2 is the current version as of this show airing. It's free. It's on GitHub. It runs on Mac. I'm running an M1 Mac, if you're wondering. Yes, it's silicon. My Mac operating system, <coughs> excuse me, too much talking today, is currently Sonoma 14.2.1. There you go. Okay. And what I think someone should do is remake that chip, the PLG 150-AN, clone it in some sort of, you know, FPGA or whatever, clone it somehow and remake it mm. because it's a really, really cool uh, synth engine. And there's only a few little issues with it. It's got aliasing and those sort of problems because it's old. But if you put it in a more powerful processor maybe that those sort of problems might go away yeah sometimes the alien adds character i mean look at the old samplers that have all the issues and stuff so yeah and i know i actually like for example we talked about the k2000 a couple of day, weeks ago i actually mm -hmm. like the aliasing of the filter on that because it actually has character mm -hmm. like you said i think mm -hmm. the way that they did it they knew it had aliasing so they were like okay mm -hmm. guys we know yeah. this is going to be crap let's fiddle with the you know the sound engineering, you know, the physics of this, and we'll try and make it sound better. And they, so they got around it in a way. Mm, they embraced it. Embraced it, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, this thing's alias, the AN1, AN200 alias is the living bejesus out of everything. <laughs> it's fantastic. If you just go up octaves, <laughs> really high, you yep. can just hear the alias thing. It's crazy. Uh, but anyway. Not, not as much as the ESQ1, eh, Rance? When you go up to high octaves on some of those oh, yeah. wave tables and it starts turning into, I yeah. don't know, telephone signals or something. Yeah, it sounds like a modem. Do you have a DX200 <laughs> as well? Uh, no, no. Um, no. No, I don't know because I've, I've got a DX7 too, so uh, I've never really... No, it's different. It. Plus it has a filter on it, so you can actually run a filter on FM, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So. Um, but that, that DX7... 200 is also one of those um, like plug-in type board chips as well. So it's the same. It's a PLG. Yeah, it's a PLG type board, and I, yeah. I mean, they were great. Those things. I, I I don't know why manufacturers don't do them anymore. Because they're probably trying to do stuff software now and make things easier. But like that uh, Radius board that I had for the M3, I still got it. Still for sale mm -hmm. if anyone wants it. That's a great little yeah. plug-in board. You know. That's a really powerful plug-in board, by the way. Uh, yeah. There you go. It's just so a pain P to address the, the presets on it, the way they did it. It's kind of a... <laughs> Robbie's telling us all the facts. PLG-150DX. So the difference between the two is just the DX and the AN at the end, which kind of makes sense because that's the name of the product. At the start, AN200DX200. It's all relative, mm. right? And one's FM synth, and the other one's an analog VA. Mm. Beautiful. Um, anyway, so that is it for news, I believe. Let me double check. 
It is indeed. We're at the end of news. So, um, what did you guys find interesting? This I did say it was a bit, a bit quiet on the news front. Anyone find anything interesting? Hmm. <laughs> Don't all chat at once. <laughs> no. um, I'm just. I'm, th- I'm trying to zoom. Think hmm. Andy said zoom. Zoom is probably chat. the best yeah, thing. Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Zoom. yeah. But yeah, not immediately interesting, but possibly something. I thought Michael Gies was the most interesting thing. I did. Sorry, which one? The Michael Gies citation. Oh, okay, yeah. I thought that was extremely interesting, and that's why I showed it. Was that for trespassing, or what was the actual? Well, get I you mean, close to the track. When you think about it, in those days, it probably would have been almost kind of like a terrorist sort of thing, right? Yeah. Wow. That this guy's rocking up with all this electronic recording gear, and you know, sure. he probably thought he was a yeah. spy. Yeah. Hmm. Pretty a very bad one. I mean, I, 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 nobody would care who you I mean, the tracks. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I recorded a twenty-minute journey on a, a, a New York subway mm. with a little Zoom H2, because yeah. it was so small, nobody bothered me. No, Whereas yeah. that poor guy um, must have taken bloody yeah, it would have been, been a real, tape recorder. You know, Yep, probably real to real, real to real or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've I've done a bit of field recording for film and television, and yeah, you do get some pretty odd looks, and you you sometimes you just you whatever you're doing, you just go. I know I'm going to have to explain myself in three seconds, and sure mm. enough, you have to explain yourself in three seconds. Mm. And uh, it's not always a short explanation. You're trying to get a recording, but you've got to. It's a very interesting thing. It's very unusual. People want to talk a lot about it. So yeah. Just have to let that go People through. Freaked out when I walk into <sighs> live streams. They go, "Hey, what are you recording?" I'm just doing a live stream. Yeah, you can move yeah. out of the way if you don't. It's a public space, you know. <laughs> yeah. so, well, you're my, one of my are best you an influencer, influencer, Andy. You're an influencer. Yeah. No, 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 one of my <laughs> one of my best recordings was going down a mine shaft and recording the mine shaft, mm. the gate closing, and all that sort of oh, stuff. Nice. And the guys, it was at the uh, mining museum in, in Wakefield, and right. in. in yeah, I mean, it was it's a, mine, a yeah. disused coal mine, but actually, it's yeah. you know, it's a it's a museum now. And these guys were so helpful. I mean, you know, I had to go down when every when the place had closed, but they they took me down. We did all the recording. It was just they were just so helpful, mm. you know. And if you ask, you know, they they do that sort of thing. You know? So when when I was doing some of the photos for the Gates album, because I don't know if you guys know, I, I wrote a blog page, and it's got. Uh, a description about all the tracks and I've got photos and so I went into my city because there's actually a city gate in our city uh, and this is the photo that I took here and I don't know if, if anyone notices but there's literally roads all around this things kind of this thing that you're looking at is sitting in the middle of a whole bunch of different <laughs> roads and for yeah, you to take not- a photo of this it's actually really quite difficult because behind me is a bridge and you can't get any further back because you're literally you've got your back up against a bridge. And if you fall off the bridge, you'd end up below on a freeway. <laughs> yes. And everyone's going like 100 it's, kilometers an hour not, down there. <laughs> it's, it'll probably it's hurt. Not tri- it's not quite the arc to Treehomph, but it's not far off. Yeah. In yeah. terms of accessibility. So, so like, I got some <laughs> really, really weird something. looks. And there was a cop driving past that slowed right down. And I was just taking it <laughs> with my phone, too. It wasn't like I just yeah. looked like a tourist. But I want yeah. with the photo I wanted to get it looking all the way down. You can probably see that it, it's looking all the way down that mm. uh, street. It's yep. called St George's Terrace, and uh, the city of that my city, the city of Perth, is like a long, thin city. <laughs> it just goes down, and it's probably only about two blocks wide. Um, where all the buildings are, that is. It's obviously a lot wider than that, but where all the main buildings are, it's just that. But yeah, so doing recordings in cities and taking photographs, photographs mm. in cities. Even to this day, you still get some weird looks from people. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially if you're into other stuff like mm. bird watching and astronomy, you're always like looking up and starting, people come by and look and start looking where you're looking. Like, <laughs> what are you doing over there? So, <laughs> Watch out for the bird shit. Oh, they got him. <laughs> exactly. But it is a fun thing to just, uh, uh, an actual uh, experiment. Just stand somewhere randomly, just looking at something that's not there. And people will oh, yeah. go, like, what is yeah. that what is that it's just, it's a fun sociological thing it is yeah mm. all right um we do have another segment to get through and then we're going to quickly uh go into the main topics this one is what we're going to get into i don't know why that went black for a second then i pressed it again probably windows 
Windows related errors. Let's brain Windows. Right, this week I have picked out a couple of interesting ones. Let's fix up the bottom. Uh, we'll put, I don't know, someone in there. Starting with the Elka Twin 61. Mmm, mm. everyone says. Ultra rare. Ultra rare, apparently. Yeah. So according to the listing, it's like having two Elka Rhapsodies in one with additional FX and modulations. And there is a demo video. I don't want to play it because I'll probably get some sort of copyright issue with it. Um, but I don't know if you like Del if you like Elka Rhapsodies, mm. you may like having two of them. I don't know. You may not. Is it rare <laughs> with the mod or just rare, period? I, I'm thinking <laughs> that it's rare with the mod. Yeah. To be mm. fair. Probably. Uh, who can I put down the bottom there? Ian. Why is Ian not there? Hey. Which one's nice. Ian? Ian's there. There you go. Oh. Fixed. Hey, what happened? Oh. Why? What? Oh, <laughs> what's going on? It's glitching out there. Oh, I know what I've done. I've, I haven't selected Ian. I've selected Ian's title. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> ah, there we go. Overlay. You selected the overlay. Um, so better. this one, this one's on reverb. It's about two thousand pounds. If you're wondering, um, yeah. I don't know. There's about four hundred different photos of this, but you know, I thought you know, Elka's a pretty mm. cool brand, and some people are interested in that sort of stuff. The next one is this one, which I've never ever heard of. This is yeah. a Condor yeah. RMS wind synthesizer, mm. and mm. this one I would probably say is ultra rare. Uh, it's only US yeah. four hundred and fifty bucks. So. Um, if so that, I, it's probably worth it. It, works. it probably is. But it's live on eBay. And let's have a look at some photos. So if I click on that, and then I click on that, because Babs will tell me off if I don't do that. Right, here we go. This is kind of looking weird. What has it got? It looks like it's trying to press his mat. <laughs> oh, it definitely oh, looks like a 70s thing, doesn't it? It's made by EMS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, looks like an old drum machine. Yeah. But I mean, wind synthesizer, right? <laughs> Isn't that why you buy a Euro rack? <laughs> hmm. That's if you buy. Well, too they much could be rack, saying it's supposed to be like a, like flutes, or it's a, it's just another fart synth, a wind synthesizer. So, intensity, vibrato, tremolo, and then you got it rate, late? max, fast, treble, bass, sensitive, mono, stereo. Wow. And then you've got all these different switches down the bottom where you've got repeat, attack. So it's kind of, it's like some sort of massive, I don't know, sorry if you didn't hear me properly there because I was away from the mic. Mm. But, but there is the, different um, sounds in there, there like tuba of, and bassoon. And, okay. I was going to say, I, I expected a kind of mouthpiece or something. It's a wind instrument. Well, that's, so that's what I'm thinking be, it is. Yeah. yeah I think so it's like something I'm you're blowing into. Exactly. Or well, maybe you sit on that and... Fart. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> you blow on it. I don't know. <laughs> there's there's there the go. hole, guys. That's what you're farting oh, into. Okay. That's what you're farting <laughs> Oh, boy. It's a fart box. Hey, hey. Uh, sorry. I should, I should behave myself a bit there's more, no shouldn't I? There's no jacks on it. Does he show the back at all? No, he doesn't. Interesting. No. Um, but. It looks like it's missing questions. some parts. Yeah. We have questions, yeah. There's Maybe just, it the, was. There was there was one other photo, and it just said Innovex is a division of Hammond. Mm. I didn't even know uh, who Innovex were, but there you go. Um, yeah, so four hundred and fifty uh, US schmackaroonies. You can get that, which has got a sax, a clarinet, a trumpet, and I don't know what you blow into it with, um, which was <laughs> probably the most important part. Mm. Uh, it doesn't exactly. say if it's missing. So those, those, those things look like switches. Are those actually keys? That's how you play it. No, it, from like the way I understand it is that you would select the sound. So say you want to yeah. have like a clarinet sound, right? You would select clarinet, yeah. and then you would blow into it. I'm guessing 
right? Someone will yeah, probably tell me. You don't blow into it. That's a Listen to me. I'm yeah. telling you in chat and you're ignoring me. Sorry, I haven't got chat open right yeah. now. So, But I would guess you'd have some sort of device that you would either blow into or maybe your microphone you would sing into. I'm not sure. Um, maybe it's a semi-vocoder type thing. I'm not sure. Hmm. Um, it's a mystery. Yeah. I'm just having a quick look at Kent, chat. So says, Kent knows about Condor it. Condor as far as a manufacturer. There you go. Kent's got one in the garage. So what do you do? Do you blow into it or do you? Ha is it just a microphone thing? Interesting to know. Did he tell us? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's telling <laughs> think, me now you don't blow into it. I think this is, is this for like stage use, like generating <laughs> wind and thunder noises, that kind of thing? Um... Maybe it's that kind. I, I I was under the impression this is basically a wind instrument, as in like wind yeah. instrument, like the yeah. type of orchestral wind instruments, not wind as in like, you know, yeah. oh, shine on your crazy diamonds is, um, part two. Something. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah. Some, someone's Googled it for us. <laughs> You add it to your Attached Hammond to organ mouthpiece. audio in. There we go. All right. Interesting. Right. It's missing a mouthpiece. Um, we should go on to the next one. The next one is the Waldorf Strike Fat. Or for those playing along at home, Sloppy Fat. Yes. Um, you can have yourself a Sloppy Fat synthesizer for 295 US dollars. I think that's probably what they are brand new, right, Andy? Not sure. Andy's muted. Oh, sorry. These brand new? Am I muted? What are these? No, you're not. Uh, I bought one for, I bought one used for about um, 200, I think, 250. Yeah. So this is mm. used. So. Why would you pay 295? Mm. So I guess... Um, if it's real good shape. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know. The reason why I chose this is kind of... You were 400 is, at one point, I think. This is so. kind of weird, this synthesizer, right? Because this is a digital synth. It's a little box. I love the sound of this thing. Um, but I tend to like it more when you've got it going through a filter. So it's kind of paraphonic in that sense, the way I set it It's up. also by Tambral, which is nice. Yeah. It doesn't have a filter on it. Um, it does kind of have filtery effects with some of the, the tones in it, but not really a filter that you can use anyway. But the thing that I find interesting about it is that if you were to buy this versus just get the VST, I think you're going to achieve the same result, right? Because this is a digital thing. It's it's software in a box. Yeah. yeah it's. But I, I like the tactile nature, obviously. And, uh, and hooking up to um, Keystep Pro, I can address both MIDI channels separately. Yeah, exactly. So tracks with it. Cool. And so. and the little the little plucky sounds um, in that second engine is actually are pretty cool. You get little sort of guitar plucky mm -hmm. sounds in it, which are quite yeah. nice. Um, okay, so that was that. So don't pay two ninety five for a used strike effect. People is kind of where we're going with that one. The next one is the Gen Sintar. Hmm. Mm. Who's had it? Who's got a Gen Sintar lying around at home? I didn't, I've never heard of these things. Ken, do you have one in the garage? <laughs> <laughs> Ken's got everything in the garage. Uh, Ken will have one in the garage. Yeah. This one's on reverb. So we can go across and have a look-see. So uh, what are we looking at? Two VCOs with some decent amount of waveforms on there um, with an LFO, a VCF, two envelope generators. Looks to me like a mono synth. I vaguely remember Chen. They were late seventies, mid to late seventies. Mm. Do I remember this though? I remember the one with yeah, seeing one with a keyboard. Chen with a keyboard. Is another one of those Dutch companies? Is Chen one of those? Not sure. The was it wasn't Chen? Um, was it Italian? Is it Italian? Hmm. I don't know. Um, hmm. Anyway, this kind of looks like it might have plonked onto something else. It, it looks like one of those add-on yeah. type module type things. 
Um, but I do like how it's, in a way, when you when we're looking at this, we're thinking this just looks like all those modules that you can buy now. knobs. Yeah. yeah. But don't forget, this is actually quite old. So mm. I don't know. Maybe some people got some design ideas from that for for today. Anyway. But that's the gen. Um, it's Centaur. It is definitely a familiar, mm. familiar beast. Hmm. And, and fourteen hundred bucks Australian is seven hundred pounds. It's probably on the pricey side, to be fair. But mm. if yeah. that is kind of a rare thing, that might be a good a good deal to get. Oh, yeah, Kansas Kansas is, and expanded it's, for the Gen SX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So I, I had a feeling. Gen was. SX was the keyboard that I, I recommend. Yeah, that, that's, that's, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely seen that. So how rare are these though? Are they fairly rare Expanded. or are they? Yeah, uh, probably. Probably rare in this country. I've never seen one programmers. here. Mm. Well, someone asked if the seller was called Weinstein. Weinstein. Oh, uh, it's a Harvey, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Ken says it sounds quite moogie, surprisingly. The, the seller is in Bologna in Italy, and his name's Scolopendra. Hmm. Scolopendra. He's got a logo too, which is kind of interesting. He has a shop. Shall we have a look at Scolopendra's shop? Why don't we? Yeah. Here we go. There's his logo. What is that? Like a some sort of uh, centipede, or yeah, but one of those kind of like ge geological type ones, right? Oh, like a fossil. A fossil. That's it. That's the word I'm thinking of. See, it's late. I've been working today, and I'm tired. Um, but he's got twelve <laughs> things in his in his shop. Oh, he's got some other interesting things there. Look at that. Some uh, Benson stuff. And lots of guitar stuff. I guess this guy's a guitarist. Anyway, enough sticky beaking at your shop. If you guys want to look at a reverb shop, you should really look at mine because there's stuff on there that I actually need to get rid of. <laughs> Which is pretty fair, right? It's my show. <laughs> um, I can't find my shop right now. Why is that? I do. I do want to add some things to my shop, by the way. Here we go. And everyone, every time I show my shop, people go, I don't get these products in my country on your shop. Mm. Um, so the Timberwolf is still for sale. Surprise, surprise. I have a feeling I'm going to be stuck with that thing forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> you will learn to love it. Definitely a lot of things are in people's carts, but no one's buying them. Um, but yeah. Oh, that's familiar. Mm. But yeah, I'll probably add a few yeah, things. I'll definitely. Yes, I'm getting you rid of like the D550. I don't use it, mate. It's not getting yeah. used. Yeah, I'm, I don't I want to just. The D50 hot. sounds. I do love the D50 yeah. sounds, but I've got mm. I've got the VST, and it's or the DO5. Get a DO5 is cool. So. Well, you, but I've got the VST, and it sounds just the same. So it is a cool. digital synth. No, nah, it's tactile. I got the joystick Good. and stuff. You know, it's different. Yeah. To yeah, yeah. Now I did with that D five fifty. I did s mm -hmm. quite a lot of repairs on this. I think I've told yeah. you guys about this already. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, you fixed the power jack. I fixed the power jack at the back. Yeah. Um, oh, you swapped it for a three prong. Uh, no. Um, but this was quite scratched up the front of this. So I've actually I've I've you know touch painted with it with um some nice black enamel paint. You can see around there, there's mm. uh, a little dent. Rack rash. Yeah. yeah. So um, the usual. But I've actually painted over the rack rash, so it actually it, okay. it actually looks really really nice um, in rural life. But you can see it's it was quite nasty looking, you know, over the years. And yeah. Don't forget these things are 1980s, right? Yeah. I forget, oh, yeah. I forget how enormous. I forget how. 87, I think. Is it 87? Yeah, 86, yeah. 87, somewhere around there. But all the oh, LCD still works. The Sorry about the bad photos, but the LCD works. <laughs> that 
that's the little dent that you can see, and I, I've just painted oh, wow. over it. Yeah. yeah, that's a real big close up on that. And there's the back, and there's the repair with the AC jack. Yeah, oh, good. Brand new. Yeah. So, um, it's yeah, not the, original. it's not original, it's not going to sound the same anymore. Yeah. original inside buddy <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want the original socket let me tell you it's just, ah, exactly it's yeah, literally yeah. snapped but it crackles and it switches <laughs> it switches off in the middle of my track i'll never get that sound back again that d550 you should include the original for completists that can have the original power jack so. mm, i mean jar floating. i had this thing where <laughs> i was like i was specimen. holding on to gear because i had it in a track or i had it on an album and i thought i would hold on to it just in case i have to re-record it or something like that and i thought no, hang on a minute what am i doing i've got 96k stems sitting in there on, <laughs> on my hard drive yeah, no that's yeah Just i'd back up my it. hard drives rather than gear yeah so um, absolutely time to get rid of it not using it anymore fair and enough. fair enough i mean like I'm, I'm kind of over the d50 sound at the moment anyway so one day if i want it back i'll buy another one or i'll just use the vst Mm. but yeah uh there'll be more gear going up probably during the week if i get time um not a lot but you know probably maybe because you, so. mm, you had no. that d50 card for it that was cool no um they actually give you extra waveforms and stuff integra was that the v synth integra that sort of same era uh before well before so, so is v synth not integra right after the varios was the v synth Oh, okay i just remember yeah. there was like a big massive roland hate around v synth because they they dropped it really really quick they didn't keep developing it mm. yeah um, it's like an old varios was also dropped and it was locked into windows 98 i think so yeah <laughs> well, well it's fair enough i mean like it's that's an yeah. old operating system what can you do yeah mm. but um yeah anyway <clears throat> well korg m3 you can't use the korg editor on it anymore because no no good but yeah, anyway, um, that's it. Now, we want to go into the next segment, which is uh, our Saturday sonority. And that is that I want to talk about our music, as in your music. Um, and it's just real, just general chit chat um, about where we're at with our music. And I think it's uh, a good time to remind us all why we talk about gear. Yeah, it's great. And we get excited about it. But really, at the end of the day, let's press record and actually put some tracks together. Because um, I don't know, I don't know how I do it, but I've managed to actually pump out an album every couple of years, and uh, they're crap. They're my albums are crap, no doubt about it. But no, um, no, uh, no. As your as your record label not. boss, I will not accept yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> In those sales. Don't talk yourself down. Let, let me, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me read this to you guys. I pay the bills, Rans. <laughs> I wrote this article uh, a couple of days ago, and I kind of I thought I'd read it to you guys. It's just me with my weird brain, the way it works. Basically, I'm talking about the musician's energy, and I'm just thinking, hmm, the work we create as musicians is emotional, irrational, structured, and chaotic. It encompasses all our feelings, historical memories, and visions for the future. As we travel through time, we wade over the ripples of our lives as each drop of water drips out the notes on a score. So I often wonder if I've become possessed by something greater than me when I write music. It's not that I'm tooting my own horn, because pardon, pardon the, bar, the bad pun there. Um, <laughs> I'm not a profession. I'm not professing that I'm actually any good at this stuff. Um, in fact, it's probably the opposite. I know, but what is kind of amazing is I've actually managed to create a track that I feel is slightly worthy of sharing with the world. And this is what I want to talk about. Hmm. Also, other strange things happen when this happens. When we listen to music, we often travel or drift away into a type of subconscious. A receptive of sounds vibrating in our ears maybe this stimulates our thoughts and releases all these kinds of emotions and memories even uh, we sometimes are connected with maybe we've heard that music before and we're connected with the memories that make make us fond but we also sometimes inspired 
and the thoughts pop into our heads and making suggestions to us of what we might could or should do with our lives. If you ever ask anyone this, most people would probably be embarrassed to agree, but truth be extracted, they would all say, yes, I, I mean, uneducatedly assume this, but everyone's experienced this, right? When you listen to music, you kind of do think about things about yourself and your life and what you could or should be doing. The other strange thing is, as we step through our lives and the pages are slowly building to the story that actually is your life, some of the experiences we have are surprisingly expected as we come across them. As almost like we've had some sort of deja vu. Um, maybe, or maybe it's the weaving of our lives that are intertwined with the steps that get us to achieve certain things. This is coming back to why we write music. So I believe on a personal level that the tracks that I've written where the melodies are just crazy, um, I feel like I have no idea how I got them. I have no understanding without a master's degree in music studies, and I'm not gonna do that. I've got other educational pleasures I wanna pursue first. But how the heck did these notes come on into some sort of melody and they they came to me somehow and I wrote them? How, how does this happen? Can you guys explain it? I think it has to do with energy. And I think the energy of thought, receptiveness, having an open mind, learning knowledge, of what we've learned, obviously, what we know, historical mm. experience, what shapes us, the physics, maybe the sound energy and what stimulates our audible side. There isn't a recipe though. I've been looking for one. It'd be nice if we could find one. A recipe that we can create that magical, crazy melody whenever we want. No, it doesn't <laughs> happen. So it usually for me, it happens when we're least expecting it. It happens when I say when we're not clenching. Hmm. What does that mean? Mm. When mm. we're just letting the energy flow to and from, maybe. So we should all enter a room with incense burning, maybe, and sit there and hold our hands together and start meditating. Maybe <laughs> we should do that. No, we're actually probably sure better off. <laughs> we're probably yeah, actually better different. off in front of our favorite instrument and allowing yeah. that to stimulate us one note at a time and let, let it mm. build let that come to us without clenching. And there again, I said it again, perhaps that's the recipe, no clenching guys. Now I just need to understand no why. Clenching. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that, cause you know, you hear of people saying they, they, they have writer's block when writing music. I, I've never mm. suffered from writer's block. Now, I, I've said this before on the show, I, I only really write music for me. Yeah. Um, mm. but I, but it's something I have to do. I have no choice, mm. really. It might take me two years to do an album, but I, mm. I'm always working on something. And I've, there's always lots of stuff because I never throw anything away. Um, you know, I've got hard drives full of full of stuff, really. You know, mm. um, I've just got stuff that I that isn't. I don't want to put out to the world because it's not ready yet. Or it, and that's the way I always think about it. You know, interestingly, the last couple of EMOMs I've done, I've been really pleased with the way that, and they're, they're improvised pieces, but there is some practice that's gone into them each, each time. Uh, I always, I, I never go and do an EMOM and, and not practice and not have an idea, a, an idea, or if you like, a score, or, you know, a, mm. notes of, of what I'm actually doing. I'm also fascinated by graphic scores, but I've never really done anything with them. I love the idea of, of, of looking at a piece of a piece of written art almost mm. and that's that's a graphic score. So if you look at sort of the John Cage did yeah. and people like that, I am fascinated by that, but I've never been able to interpret that or use it. But I'd love to. I, yeah. I just have to do it, you know. I mean and you know, it's nice when people like it. Uh, and I know I've got a small audience because it's quite experimental, you know. But I, I mean, the fact I that you've got an audience is amazing, game. mate. It's that's the good thing you know, about it. Um, you've got one. Yeah, but I and but I don't make it for anybody else. You know, um, mm. I just make it for me. And uh, you know, this sounds arrogant, but I do actually listen to my own music. I don't listen to it all the time, but every so often I'll go back and I'll listen to, you know, the albums that I've put out, and I'm dead proud of them. You that's know? awesome, mate. 
there are really yes good. there are That's mistakes good. there are mistakes in there there are things that i i mean um when i did the i did an album that was all based around using an accordion it doesn't sound like an accordion album but it was that was the main instrument there's a piano piece on there and i played it three or four times and i i wish i could i, I know i could play it better now if i replayed it but it was time scale. I had to get the thing finished and got to get it out there because it was actually part of an assignment for my. You know, you mm -hmm. say about doing a master's degree. That was that was my final master's piece was to do an album. Mm -hmm. You know, and wow. it, and I had a deadline. I had like six weeks to do it, the album and do everything to do with it, which was I never want to be in that position again because I yeah. I don't like mm. that amount of pressure because it wasn't right yeah, it wasn't not, finished it's yeah. not the same thing yeah. is it it's not organic no well it's like yeah. the hardware jams yeah. you get one every week and you got the pressure yeah. to get it done yeah i couldn't do that i couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't yeah, do that I, yeah. you know yeah, i don't think that's in my dna yeah i, I, yeah, I did do this one year i did do the 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 january thing where i did a track each day and i did mm. do a track each day for 30 31 days is it um and i've never put any of that stuff out because you know it isn't good enough to put yeah. out really yes i put it out as a video at the time but and my in the back of my mind and it's still there it may end up be, appearing in an album at some point in the future but it would need mm. an awful lot of work mm. to get to that point mm. yeah you know that's the thing sometimes it, you're starting things rather than finishing them the finishing mm. can take years yeah yeah sometimes yeah, yeah. but i always but, have something that i can make music on i never go yeah. anywhere without anything but then it might be something to do with that push pull thing you know that principle so mm -hmm. the the equilibrium is in the middle right so sometimes we push things and it's not necessarily the right energy that we're doing we're kind of pushing it in, in it's kind of mm -hmm. it, it might be pulling back while we're pushing it and then the other way around we could be pulling something and it might be pushing back so we've got to find something where we feel kind of at peace and I feel like what you're saying is that, you know, when you did the January, you probably felt like rushed because you had to do one every day. It was rushed. And when yeah. you did your masters, yeah. you had six yeah. weeks to finish an album, you felt rushed. So mm -hmm. that's the push pull theory. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You know, and I, I mean, yes, there are times when I have to do, you know, I have to do work for people and it, it needs to be done. I mean, mm -hmm. I couldn't do what Ty Unwin does, I couldn't do it for a day job mm -hmm. because. Mm. No, I mean Ty himself has said that he, he he doesn't make music for himself. He makes it because he makes it to us, you know, a piece of film or a script or whatever he's needing to do. Uh, and those deadlines are always ridiculous. They're mm. always they're always you know. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you can see when he's been up for yeah. Yeah. Thing yeah. 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 You can see when he's been up for three days and he's absolutely knackered and he's because his deadline is mm. in an hour's time. That type of yeah. I couldn't I couldn't yeah. do that, you know. I wouldn't want to do that. Apparently, the, I know the writers, the, rewards, the writers in, but, um, in you know, in in the US with the, that write for all the sitcoms and that they have the similar sort of situation mm, where they they're sure just they given do, yeah. very little amount of time. Very little time. Yeah. Yeah. It's sometimes the same for feature films. Yeah. You know, people are given very little time. Which is why you, you tend to hear a lot of repl replicated stuff because they're they don't have time to yeah. have something novel, so yeah. they'll rip off something, do a spin on yeah. a famous track, and yeah, you know, like commercials, I, big time occasionally you'll get like a, a film where the composer gets replaced is another thing that used to happen doesn't happen so much now but yeah. it used to happen a lot back in the 70s and 80s where it just it just wasn't working and they just said right we're gonna have to just change the composer and that's when you now they replace two week deadline. <laughs> yeah and that's where you, that's yeah. where, the, where people got two weeks to finish a, a major feature film score yeah <laughs> that's amazing doing two yeah. weeks I mean I, I I often look back at like Star Wars it's a really sort of cliche thing to say these days but when you think about that that film the very first one the amount of stuff that went into that film with you know the the William score the um mm. you know sound the effects. the ben sound Hurt. effects the you know, Ben yeah um you know it, it was just it really was quite a musical thing it really was like it was Still to this day, I'm kind of, you know, I kind of am amazed at how they even created this, you know. And it was basically, once they did that, then that became the foundation of what they decided to do yeah, next. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think they actually found it hard to actually to match it in some degree. And it wasn't that the first, that was not, wasn't that the first sci-fi film that actually was like dirty in the sense that it was, 
you know, it, it was like it was more real life because up until that point, m yeah, most sci-fi films had been, yeah. you know, clean, spacemen in suits, pristine, and clean, white and, rooms, yes, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, there may well have been things before life. that, but but that was, mm. so we say, the first major film that actually, you know, it it had it was dirty and gritty yeah. and all of that, and it looked, you know, tattooing didn't look pretty, you know. I, I don't know about you guys, but you you know we're driving around picking up things and you know you know in our cars and we probably switch the radio on every now and then and I often find myself switching it off more often than I used yeah. to and probably as I as time goes on there's even a point now where if I hear something musical on the radio um, and I and I don't recognise it I won't listen to it. Uh, because I just know, just from experience, that it's going to be some sort of really highly polished commercial crap or that, derivative of something yeah, you like. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah I don't. I mean, I, the, satellite the, radio I is good. I, listen to satellite radio. So. Yeah, well, that, yeah, I mean, definitely I, listen the, to the other stuff. But I'm talking about I'm talking about mainstream radio, right? Yeah, so, the only main, the closest mainstream radio I get, and I listen to it on here in the UK. We've got a, a thing called the BBC iPlayer. And I listen to Radcliffe and McCurney, which is as, probably as, as commercial as I get, and it's and it's on six music, so it's not ra it's not Radio One or Radio Two. Mm. Um, and for for years now, I've really struggled to find interest in popular music, if you like. Yeah. I wouldn't say pop music, but you know. So I mean, I, I there's I listen to there's a thing called the Freak Show on, on six music, which is experimental avant garde stuff, and. I'm much more interested in that than than you know, and I love I love pop songs. I love female pop pop singers, you know. But so much, I mean, I suppose the 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 only the only pop singer that I actually listen to most would be Lord at the moment. I think last couple of albums by her I've quite liked, you know. There's a there's an artist there's a, actually a, 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 an artist coming out with an album this year. Oh, this this month, sorry, from York, who I think is amazing, a girl called Bonneville. Right. Uh, and she's been around for probably five or six years doing absolutely nothing, but she's got an album coming out finally this month. You know. So so where um, I was where I was going with the radio thing in was slightly slightly different track. Uh I was kind of thinking to myself, Am I turning into one of these old gets that yeah, get doesn't want to yeah it doesn't want to listen to the young <laughs> yeah, kids yeah, music yeah. right mm -hmm. and, I'm, and i'm actually thinking to myself okay so if this is the case then maybe i should give it a go i should you know stop being like an old git and you know listen to it give and it sit chance. back and listen to it but i've i've tried it's not that I haven't. Mm. It's not that I'm kind of like, yeah. just, nah, I'm not interested. I've actually really made an effort to try it and like it. Mm. And what happens is I actually find that the whole lot of all the stuff, all it does is it triggers, oh, my God, that was from this particular artist. That's just getting <laughs> regurgitated <laughs> from that. And, one. and I, it just yeah. makes yeah. me yeah. angry yeah. because I, can't you guys well, come up with something original? Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. When, well, when you see these things, like that, yeah. that, that's true. They they have they'll, they'll have like fifteen writers on a on a pop on a pop song, so everybody takes their cut out of it. Yeah. Mm. And I mean this idea of you know the, per, the you know somebody writes a certain section, then then you've got somebody else who's doing the top line, the melody part, and then somebody else will be doing bits of bits of lyrics. Mm. You know, it, it is so sort of it's jigsaw, isn't it? Really, mm. they're just they're just doing jigsaws. Well, it's just know? sample There's, beats, isn't it? There's also mm. there's also a lot of um, you know producers that bubble to the surface from like the underground to popularity, and then they're in demand to work with other artists, and so they have to turn. They're under a lot of pressure to turn out something very similar to the track that just got them noticed, and there's a lot of that oh, going of on. Yeah, that that's why but they've been picked. Now it's they? now it's at an industrial scale. Mm. So it, there's so many new people because you've got TikTok and you've got all these different ways of discovering new artists, and they're churning through them like they're nobody's business. Mm. Like there's, there's some artists it, you you hear of or producers more more producing um, six months 
It's the five second generation. That's 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 their whole career. Six months. Yeah. It's and then it's it's you might second generation. Uh, you'll hear them come back twelve months later. These guys talked about a famous composer that did like fifty musicals in a series of so many years, because they it's a, like a factory there too. They go, oh, we like that composer. Make a bunch of these musicals um, and stuff. So it's it's in a lot of industries, not just in pop music and stuff. That, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You get these yeah, guys it's, that it's, it's, get favored the and then just crank out all this stuff. But did you see the new Rick Beato thing where he's talking about the lyrics? That was pretty funny. <laughs> he's goofing on all the no. pop song lyrics and how how writing is so bad now for songs. Yes, I can just, imagine. <laughs> it's another get off I, my lawn I, thing, I, but it's pretty funny because yeah, the, yeah. I mean, the, the actually an interesting podcast. I don't know if you, you've heard it. The Song Exploder series of podcasts. Oh, that's where a, they take that's, a song. Dude, they, that's a great series. I like that. It is, and and actually mm. the. I mean, a lot of the music on there. I actually, when I, when I, I'm, I'm really interested in how it was made or how, what, you know, hmm. the, the process yeah. that these people have gone through. But usually, at the end of it, probably nine times out of the ten, I don't like the song. Okay. At the end That's of interesting. it. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's very few things on there that I've, I've come away with and thought. There's a couple of artists where I thought, oh, I'm going to go and listen to their album, you know, because there's something yeah. interesting there. But an awful lot of it. I, no. I have to admit, when I listen to that podcast, I really p- cherry pick. I cherry pick the episodes of the oh, songs. I've, I've, I've listened to all of them. Yeah, you know. which is yeah. yeah. So. I, nah. I like <laughs> actually one of my favorite I'm, podcasts. No, is no, I'm not being, one. I'm not pissing up we, uh, Ian's you know trumpet here, but I actually like Ian's podcast because cool. it's yeah. actually oh, thank you because hey. it's actually it's refreshingly good. That's what I like about it. Oh, that, that's quite. No, and I, I mean, there's I, artists that you've put on there that I've never heard of, and you know now exactly. I like them. That's that's you know that's 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 part of the that's part of the process. Mm. Um, you know, it, it, I always I am always looking for people that you know are under the radar, really. You know, um, well, it's interesting, so, Rance. There's a great Australian I, podcast called Art of the Score. Have you guys heard of Art of the Score? Uh, no. fact, I have, was it a television of, series? Uh, soundtracks and stuff like that. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a, it's a bunch of Australian guys doing this really, really good podcast. And oh, cool. one, one's a composer, one's a classical musician, one's an educator at university or something like that. And they get okay. together, and it's funny, and they break down like famous scores, famous soundtracks, even jingles and even bumpers, <laughs> all the old um, VHS logos you've been watching for years that opened all yeah. the VHS tapes. Some of those are like composed by Michael Kamen and some of these famous guys that, yeah. that nobody knew about mm. at the time because they're just bumpers. And they they analyze all this stuff and they 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 the guy plays with a real piano while they're doing it to you, it can instantly break down anything and knows all the harmonic structure. Cool. It's fascinating. If you guys are into music that much, uh, what, listen to Art of the Score. It's a really mm. really good podcast. Definitely check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're Aussies. Cool. So, hmm. well, I mean, you know, some of us are pretty good. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's rumored. Yeah. Fair dinkum, right? So, Fair um, dinkum. So let's get back to what we were talking about before. So, I mean, I, I, I sort of went off this really weird sort of contemplate your navel story at the start. But really, what mm-hmm. what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to sort of share with you the fact that I don't have any control over my creational abilities no. when I create music. Um, so if you're if you're sort of out there right now and you've got writer's block or you you're struggling to get started or you think that you're not good enough the this is going to sound like a cliche but it's actually more true than you believe that you should just literally press record and just start doing start. something just lay it down yeah, into a DAW start. and just you know and start working yeah, with that yeah. see how you go you never know it might turn into something worthwhile and in a lot of cases, a lot of the music that I've recorded you know, when I'm doing my albums ends up on the cutting room floor. So don't worry mm-hmm. if it does end mm-hmm. up on the cutting room floor. Let it. That's where it belongs. That's fine. But you needed to go through that process to get to mm-hmm. the next stage or to get to the thing that you yeah, are actually going to do. Yeah. 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 I think I've heard many uh, musicians say the whole sort of you need to get through that track before you can get to the good, the good yeah. track. You yeah, know what I mean, you can kind of, you have to, something has to, something in your process has to take that to completion before it can kind of unblock the rest of you to move on to something else. It, it's the same with writing or graphics or fine art. You know, put it mm-hmm. away for a while, come back with fresh eyes or in yep. this case, yeah. fresh ears, and then, oh, oh that's kind of yeah. cool. I forgot about that. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And I've, I mean, I've probably said this before, but I always, I always need something for, for an inspiration. Like I, I, I talked about the fact that the last yeah. album I put out was that, 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 that photograph. I've actually started buying, um, you know, little art books in charity shops. I bought a book about mm. concrete. I've packed it away at the moment. So it's just a small book. It was something like a fiver. It's just called Concrete and it's just buildings. Right? Yeah. Right. And actually, yeah, I thought. Concrete I thought, architecture. But mm. no, but the reality is some of these buildings are really, really quite, you know, brutal architecture. Yeah. yeah. Brutal, isn't um, yeah. And at some point in the future, I will use that as yeah. an inspiration to do hmm. either a song yeah. or an album or, you know. It's, exactly. I, I, and yeah. It's a, that's your a, artistic, guy, that's, that's your foundation yeah. for your next thought. Yeah, I love it. It's great. There's a, there's a, yeah. I, can't, there's a, I bought some, uh, some they're, they're like pamphlet books and they're books of photographs from, I think from the 50s right through to the 90s. Uh, they're, they're mainly English and British. Uh, and this guy would put co these collections of books together and he pops them out uh, every so often. And I bought, I think I bought, there were 10 for something like 15 or 20 quid, you know? And I, 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 sh I keep I keep forgetting to sort of subscribe and buy them regularly, but I haven't done anything with them, but I've got these books and I know that I'm going to go through them at some point mm. and think, Hopefully we're back in a sec, guys. Sorry. Let's go back here. Hopefully I'm back. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, I'm back, cool. Sorry, the guys will be back in a minute when they've realized it's crashed. Um, if they can probably see my, my comment on chat. Um, no, I didn't have to reboot, it's just the software crashed. That's all. Yeah. Sorry guys, nothing to me, really? nothing to do with me. Just software crashed. Software crashed. Yeah, there we go. Th they're all coming back. Hey, yeah. um, they're all in different spots now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I had a feeling that would happen, but I thought, no, I think we have to reconnect. It won't do it itself. Hey, who's that right there? <laughs> <laughs> who's that? Guy? It's it's the dark ghost. <laughs> Anyway, um, mm. th that's good. And like in those points that you were making yeah, about books saying, and stuff, yeah. they, they are really good because they are going to give you some sort of theme or creativity foundation for your next, yeah. you know, escapade. Um, like I said, like when I was making my last album, sticking to some theme was actually, it was a discipline at the same time it was enjoyable, enjoyable but it was a challenge as well. Mm. And I may do that again. I'm not sure if it's going to be the next album, but I may do it again. Um, for something, I'm not sure, um, but it it was a nod to that sort of 60s and 70s era. I kind of feel, and in a way, um, what you're saying, Andy, about Rick Beato, he this is kind of I watched that episode, but I actually felt the he was more talking about how a songwriter should be able to tell a good story, hmm. and um, and when you're listening to it, the the music and the melody complement that story and that is what brings you in that's what hooks you in to that particular story um and there's some some really really good examples uh over the years of what that is okay. hey, Kent. Hey, hey Kent. it's going buddy <coughs> oh. not no. yet not working no, yet but yet. hang on it might be me wait it could be me do not worry no it's not me it's you. <laughs> can't, can't oh, what another installment of what's in my garage. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't get to the garage. We only got to the attic. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. 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 I'll pop the chatties up top, shall I? Unless someone else wants to come into Zoom. I need to make a pilgrimage one day and check the whole thing out. 
Oh, yeah, that better? Got to. Yeah. Oh, that's Ooh, much better. Oh, yes. Your dogs, dogs, dogs are much better. Much better. Yeah. 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 The, the dog, I mean, I'm not a dog big. person, and I'm, and I'm actually allergic. But actually, I'm in oh, love no. with Kent's dogs. <laughs> so I, I, I took, <laughs> I took loads of antihistamines, and honestly, they're they're wonderful. Did Charlie get yeah. close to you at all? Oh, Charlie's great. Yeah. Yeah, I turned up with cinnamon buns, so yeah, of course, of course, all the time. They bribe them, yeah, they go. Oh, you watch those cinnamon buns, Ian. Yeah, I had one today. I know, I'm going to be. You're going to have to watch it. you end up like me. Waffer thin. Yeah, waffer thin, yeah. Yeah. No, you know what you're saying about modern pop music? Yeah, uh, I I got a theory on that, which is it wasn't written for us. Uh, oh, absolutely. We, mm. we, no, we can't no. connect to it. We can't connect to yeah. it. No, nah, I, I don't think we can. Nah. We don't relate nah. to it. So I I mean I listen to a lot of modern pop stuff and I'm just going. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, but exactly. I'm listen. I'm listening for different things yeah. to you know what the kids yeah. listen to. Yeah. Um, so. And of course, it's not there because the, the kids aren't interested in that. They will be later, um, which is why you see a lot of '80s tracks coming out now, but where the the girl sings the lyrics very, very slowly, and it's with a piano with a lot of reverb, reverb on the end of it and stuff like that, in yeah. adverts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so the the music merit is still there. It's just today's kids are going, no, that's not our music. We want our music, which was what we were like. Mm. Back in the late seventies, eighties. Yeah. Well. well, yeah. Where I mean, that's what going. What is this crap you're listening to? You know. Well, mm. well, that's what I'm worried about because I know that mm. I'm here. I am, you know, thinking I just can't, like you said, I can't connect with you it. Can't I'm, connect. I'm having trouble, yeah. sort of getting into it because uh, I do. I really do want to see what they see in it. Um, but I think it's it's probably not music that they're seeing in it. I think it's probably. Maybe culture. It's, it's it's a village it's thing. Culture in You've general, got to be part of that village, and if you're not, you know, yeah, if you're not yeah. in that village, belonging, sense yeah. of belonging. I mean, they yeah. need to belong to something that's theirs. Especially with the lyrics, I mean, the word usage. Mm. There's a lot of slang in there I don't use. I don't even know what the hell mm. half of it means. So <laughs> it's definitely I mean, not for I, me. I, you know, no, I, and I've really struggled with hip hop because there's probably yeah, about again. half a dozen hip hop tracks over the years that I've actually thought that's a really good track, but they're few and far between. Yeah, and I just yeah. have a great not beat and not much else. Same, yeah. no, and yep. it's, yeah, I absolutely. Mean, it's a lot. It's in a lot of cases. It's I, I, I get that it's clever lyrically. There, you know, it's really clever. Yeah, but um, it, for me, it's missing the melody. Yeah, and I'm, mm. I've, I've always missing the melody. Liked a decent melody. And every every yeah. snare hit sounds like someone breaking a femur, and that <laughs> yeah. just really hurts my <laughs> the ears. Crack the snap. <laughs> you got to have yeah. the snap. Boom, oh, they use the know, kick drum. It sounds like you're shutting the door. That. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I have to uh, say, I, do, old, I, I only re, I only really connect with hip hop when it has a melodic side to it, mm. and a lot more yeah. hip hop has mel melodic stuff in it now. Because and humor too. Like, like I love DMX stuff mm. a lot. It's angry, but it's 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 funny. So so. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, but I mean, I just, we rode waves of different genres though, like. You know, I'm not exactly young, but I still, I still sort of got really into rap. Uh, I liked rap. There's, there's definitely, rap Flash was there's, there's definitely some rap that school. I absolutely love, and there's definitely rap that I absolutely hate. Um, yeah. It's kind of weird. Like, I never really got into Eminem though. Um, I, I, the Shims, I, I have to say that I, I listened to the when the when the Slim Shady album came out. Mm. I listened to it and it, and I really listened to the lyrics, you know. And I thought I thought it was really really well done, you know. And He's also incredibly fast. That's that's, that's, that's one of his. Yeah, that, that's that's probably about as close as I've got. I have tried to listen to sort of NWA and and, and stuff like that, and it just really it's just stuff. not for me. Mm. You know? Yeah, really. I did. I yeah, didn't connect with any of the stuff. I don't connect with any of the stuff in that era, but the more mm. modern. Hip hop is a little bit more, I don't know, palatable to me for some reason. I think because it uses a lot of <laughs> some of the musical references from my childhood or you know teenagehood, yeah, our formative years. So as a reference, um, but it's it did take. I think it's also just 
how much you listen to. I mean, I'm I'm a bit weird, I think, because I listen to one particular radio station exclusively, which is strange even in this town. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's Triple J. Yeah. You probably, yeah. So you get a lot of, um, you get a lot of independent music in there mixed with a whole lot of commercial stuff and it's really bizarrely mixed up. But that's where I get exposed to a crap ton of music. It's still repetitive as hell, which is quite annoying for me because mm. when I hear a song, I don't need it replayed in my head a hundred times. I do that by myself. <laughs> but um, I've been exposed to a, to a lot of stuff that initially when I heard it, it's like, I don't get it. Let's forget about it. I don't, I'm not really interested in it. Um, that's just something annoying. But the more and more I hear it, the more I started tuning into things. And I've started tuning into things that I never would have thought I would have understood. And that does improve the appreciation for it. So I don't know about Ransford. I don't know if you need to persist at it or maybe you just need to try something a little bit in between super commercial. Because I have to admit, the super commercial stuff annoys the crap out of me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really, really so pushes the buttons of like, like well, it's, 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 it's designed yeah. to smack me in the face and tell me you're not one of us. <laughs> it's, it's, I, mean, I have, it's pretty I have my stuff daughter. Below with, that, I have my daughter really in the car with me, right? Interesting stuff. And she, she's kind of, she's a, she's fifteen. She's probably at that age where uh, she's discovering what it's like to become an adult soon. So it's probably it's important to sort of follow that little journey, but I actually I actually find because she's actually quite uh, experienced in music. She's been doing it since quite young, and she's you know one of the best music students in her school. So when she does listen to things and she gives me her opinion, I'm like, okay, this is actually coming from like a reasonably educated sort of mind. Um, whereas it's not just some kid blindly following something because it's, you know, a fanboy moment type thing. Uh, and I kind of, like, I, I, I stop myself from saying things because I don't want to sound like the dad that's, you know, knows everything. So I usually just bite my lip. But like she'll say stuff where you've heard that music before and this particular group has regurgitated it through sampling or whatever, mm. and they're just re know rehashing the, something that we've already heard so i don't instead of yeah. me saying oh that's blah 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 i just won't yeah. say it now i'll just go oh yeah that's pretty cool and you know i'd yeah. let them let them enjoy the moment as opposed to me sort of and that's, say, by the way check this yeah. one out yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's yeah. but basically because what they're doing what they're trying to tell you is that they want you to share in that experience the only thing yeah. they don't know is that you've already experienced it yeah and your sign is like i've already experienced it but it sounds like oh you don't know what you're talking about yeah I've been there yeah. before I've seen everything I can't possibly learn anything or share anything with you that's what they're hearing this, I suspect this is one of the great things about but games at like Grand Theft Auto they have the radio station mentality and you can hear like classic music while you're playing the game and kids get in, exposed to that stuff you know mm. on little mm. radio stations but it's good because that means they're going off on that little path and they and now they'll be enjoying that whereas probably before they weren't so mm. I mean video game culture I I would have to say my generation were probably the first generation to actually have music influence from playing computer mm. games or video games. You know, even if it was arcade games. Chip tunes. <laughs> yeah. And some of them were amazing. You know, some of them were really, oh, yeah. really cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've I've remade some of them. Mm. Mm. I remember there was a on a on a AB, our sort of national broadcast house has a radio station I guess every national broadcaster does but um, they had um, they have a classical station that does like uh, the top 100 classical tracks or something one year they did um, top 10 soundtracks and it could be film or television or video games and I was really quite surprised at the amount of video <coughs> game soundtracks that ended up in the top 100 yeah. classical <laughs> some stuff I'd, I, you know, some stuff I gave a listen and went, mm, really? And some stuff I went, yeah, that's mm. worthy. That's pretty cool. I just wasn't yeah. into the gaming culture to the same degree as other people. So I didn't mm. really get Well, I've talked about, I've talked about EVE Online before, right? And the original, the original soundtrack to EVE Online, if you've never, ever heard it, the guy that wrote it is like an absolute god in Iceland. 
Nice. And uh, in fact, he's now been, you know, picked up by the Icelandic government to do a whole bunch of stuff now. And it literally started from him, you know, mm. with his uh, Jupiter 6 and, <laughs> you know, writing music for a game, which yeah. is pretty cool. I think that's like awesome. And his music mm. wasn't crap. It was actually commensurate to the type of mm. game that you're playing. So he, he was being a bit of a tie Unwin in that sense. Yeah. He was writing to help yeah. you understand what, you know, that world that you are yep. supposed to be in, that environment, yep. which is quite a good skill. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I could do that. Well, I probably could, but I wouldn't yeah. do a very good job. <laughs> there are a ton of classical style guys doing video game stuff. They're amazing. Yeah, and that's like, it's yes, really become, kid. Yeah, and uh, and uh, Michael McCann, I think, from Canada and stuff. It's great stuff. It's just... I remember when Hans told me he, was, he said he goes, oh, he says I'm, I'm going to be doing a track for a computer game. I mean. Really? What? Why have you decided to go for that? Then he says, "See what it'd be like. It'd probably be a giggle." And it was um, was it again? Crisis Two, right? Oh, he ended up doing it for that. Uh, he's, I remember him saying, "He says, yeah, it was really, really good fun." He said, "But initially, there was no game to write the music to." Oh, that's hard. <laughs> How do you do that? Oh. Yeah. Oh, just a concept. Uh, yeah. They gave him a storyboard and a couple of sketches. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, this, yeah. this is roughly what the game will yeah. be like. And they're going. Uh, Use your imagination. Yeah. I've had less for films before now, so exactly. yeah, all right, we'll be on with it. Well, and it worked. Well, GTA it worked. V had a bunch of Tanger and Dream stuff in it. Yeah, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's funny enough, those GTA games are responsible for introducing so many young people to the older music. Yeah, that's true. And but they yeah. accept it because because of the concept of the computer concept, game, it's yeah. brought it into it's, their world yeah. context. Yeah. And it's a radio station. Yeah. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah, and they, the station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, I used to love driving around and just shooting at everything, listening to the that classic <laughs> FM station that they had, running people <laughs> over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I now got something. To... <laughs> oh, mate, if you, I got to try, try it. I tried to get into GTA GTA Five and I couldn't. I mean, get into it. I played the, it the DJ it. on the no, classical station was genius. He really was. He just talked like <laughs> there. He goes, and now for something from the fifties, the eighteen fifties, that is, and more. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. Had to drive him by. Yeah, have some of that. <laughs> so beautiful. So you know, wherever you are like in your in your music life you, you may be interested in computer games you might be interested in films you might be interested in sitcom tv whatever it is it might be something that inspires you to to write something and um i don't know you don't have to have a gig uh, to do this if you want just no, no. you know you can just pretend that no, someone's no. given you this gig and see how you go it's, it's on i yeah imagination you just pretend. I, yeah. I, I do. I do a hell of a lot of writing where I'm just imagining who's listening to, it, even though I know full well they probably never get to them. Mm. But you just, you just, you just always write for the big audience you think you think you're going to get. I don't know. I, I, not everyone can do that. I guess I think that way, but yeah. that's just what. No, th- that's the weird headspace I go into anyway. If that were, I think most mis- you, mis- yeah. musicians try to trip themselves up. Constantly, yeah. um, mm-hmm. like where Ian We're was tragics. saying about, it, you know, he writes for himself, right? Um, there's there's stuff I've done where I'm, I'm writing for myself, and I've gone, ah, yeah. But then I think, would other people listen to this? No, they probably wouldn't enjoy this. And go, all right, forget it, and move on, try something else, knowing that whatever it is that I write next, I'm not going to be happy with either. And you just end up with a lot of like. Self sabotage. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, like, constantly, and what I keep trying to get back to how I used to be when I first started mm. playing, uh, of just being able to go la 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 la. Oh, that's brilliant. Record it. Uh, put drum loops mm. on it and stuff. Yay, brilliant. Next one. La 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 la. Yeah. And and it didn't seem to matter. And now yeah. everything. You know, now I'm sort of like overly conscious of like. Yeah, but if yeah. other people audience, did, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I know what you yeah. mean, but but yeah. I should have prefaced that with I, the audience that doesn't exist. I imagine is listening to my music, where they agree with every decision I make. Yeah, <laughs> okay, that's just great. 
Yeah. About is you have it. zero time to think about it. You just got to get it done. Yeah. And it's not going to be finished, mm-hmm. and it's not going to be mm-hmm. the best thing you've ever made, maybe, and maybe it is. But you just got to get it out there, and don't be precious about it. Yeah, yeah I mean, I have to say, all, all of my albums that I've put out, none of them were ever really finished. Yeah, there's no such oh, thing as because finished, I could, is there? What's, no, no, because it, you know, I, I just stopped. What, but I also, I, I tell you, I did it. Abandoned, not I, finished? Yeah. Back in the 2010s, I was so in, I, for a part I, two. I, I had a pop group, and I'd written all the songs for this pop group a girl fronted pop group and we i put the album out on Bandcamp and was never happy with it and i've i've actually tried to go back to it and do something you know i've got the stem still and i can't you know i just can't go yeah, back to it the moment's uh, passed because you know i mm. almost feel like i should probably re-record them if i want to do anything with them find a decent find a decent girl singer and re-record them and do something else and do different versions of them rather than just go back to the stems, mm. you know. Yeah. Um, because I yeah. was happy with just, I love, I mean, I thought the songs were great. Um, mm. You can say that about your own songs, can't you? You know, um, but but I actually, I, they were never put out on streaming services because they were, I didn't think they were good enough to, I put them out <coughs> on Bandcamp at the time, it's still out, it was still up there. Um, you know, we sold a few CDs and we sold a few downloads. You know, um, and I still, I still will sometimes sit and play play these songs on guitar, because just like Vince Clark, I started writing them on guitar, and then mm. moved them to yeah. synths and other things. You know, I think you're right, Ian. Like I think if you go back and touch it again, you can ruin it, because you'll never mm. ever have that same. You know, you're not in that same sort of zone that you were in when you no. originally yeah. wrote it. Mm. It's a little bit like painting yeah. with um, oil based paints, right? If you if you wait too long and it becomes like semi dry and you try and paint again on it, you're just going to ruin it's a different, it. Different. So yeah. it's although yeah, a remix it's can't work, yeah. you can remix your own stuff and you know. yeah. I mean, look at look yeah. at the stuff the Apex Twin does. Not remixes its own stuff a lot. So yeah, yeah. I think it depends on whether you've released it. Or not. I guess it's different um, if you've released something and then you want to use it as even even if you're just using it as an inspiration for something new. Mm. It's different if people, if it's out there. But if it's something you've had on your hard drive and you've not released it, I reckon it's definitely fair game for taking inspiration. Not necessarily even trying to make it again, just trying to take what you liked from it I mean, and move into I've something got half else with that. Hmm. Half a dozen songs which are pre- they're they're in they're on they're a demo form, but um I'm I need a I need a decent girl singer to sing to sing them. Yeah. Um and I'm really happy with the actual you know the way that the strong songs are constructed yeah. um and my hope is when i when i get down yeah down to to, to froom that I, I can maybe find somebody you mm. know i've even toyed with the idea AI of maybe doing, I'm going to, i was just about to say that ken yeah, the, yeah. The, we're getting to that point where <laughs> one the female, person to pay for <laughs> vocaloid yeah, well, uh, it's one your one yeah, you know, honestly, so I don't know if it will ever. Where they, I don't think it will. Good enough. No, I don't. What about the will. the one Ben Jordan demonstrated, the AI related, the ones that actually just transform a performance with someone else's yeah, vocal it's a style? Because I can that's do, a I different. Can do, I can well, the AI singing sing, stuff is good. Sing. Press had made some stuff with a female yeah. voice that sounded nice. I, I sang. You know, I went. I went and sang with. The, I went and sang with that band two weeks ago in, before moving down here uh, and it was quite nice to get in the back in the room with, with guys that I sang with in the band 20, 30 years ago oh, yeah. you know yeah. uh, and actually I could I could still hold the tune you know I'm yeah. not the world's best singer but I can hold the tune I, I um, honestly believe that when they do the AI stuff it's going to uh, it's going to be edited the crap out of and then it will it'll go on some sort of really famous song it'll make the charts and then someone will go no one sang that it's an mm. ai and then everyone will be like oh what you know and then they'll just they'll all think yeah. oh the ai is going to take over the music industry but what it isn't it's not it's just been it's probably been no. heavily edited you'll never get mm. ai like raw i don't think yeah but that female vocal here's the difference you do sing it it takes your inflection it takes your yeah. actual mm speech and mm. converts it to a female voice but the inflection is there uh, from you yeah the yeah. performance the is other thing is that, that i mean that's yeah. fine but i actually like i like i like being in a room with other people other musicians oh of course I, I, and mm. to be fair i don't do it enough 
you know i mean part of the reason for you know when i get down the south i am going to join a band even if it's a covers band just to be in a room with other musicians oh, that's you nice. know because i do spend an awful lot of, like you guys I, I spend an awful lot of time on my own creating music mm. which i'm quite happy yeah. to do but mm. actually i want to be in a room with somebody else sometimes to actually you know i actually I want like to talk, the collab the i want to talk about that Ian, on a, on the next show I actually think oh, great. the, the great. next time what we want to talk about is because this show was just about us individually creating. Mm. The next one is that moment that you have when you're with other musicians mm. and you actually you, you, you get out of your self-interest for one stage and you actually start listening to everyone else in the room playing mm, at yeah. the same time. There's some magic thing that happens. Definitely. And anyone who's ever done it knows exactly what I'm talking about. But it doesn't happen straight away because everyone at first is there self-absorbed you have mm. to wait for that moment before everyone yeah. gets out of their own self-absorbedness yeah. and then they and start some listening never get past that. i work with some yeah. Oh, yeah. never get past yeah, that yeah 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 people like that yeah, yeah. Mm. and i mm. believe it or not i've actually had that happen to me on jam tabber even yeah i was like, going to say i've heard you, you hear the moment where the people within the group suddenly yep click and they all click the it's crazy the, and the, in, the individuals kind crazy. of crazy you know, disappear away or no away. one can explain this shit I'm telling you right now you could you could get the best psychologists psychiatrists <laughs> no matter what musicians anyone I don't reckon anyone would be able to explain it they'll just oh it's just well, we're pattern we're pattern forming animals and you, they find yeah, a pattern and you all get in the pattern so there you go <laughs> yeah but even then when, when when the room starts I mean it all, they all sound like they're doing like you know like four-year-old recorder practice yeah and it's <laughs> messy guitar and center doing everyone's it. doing different things yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but slowly people begin to pick up on oh if he's done that chord I think yeah, he will click. go here yeah and you, you pick up on each yeah. other and then suddenly there's this moment where it just goes and yeah. then it happens yeah, yeah. exactly it's most bizarre so we'll, we'll I reckon we'll pull that apart in, in another episode yeah definitely because it's a cool, cool thing to talk about um, mm -hmm. but the, I just want to you did it on the stream uh, uh, on the show and then yeah. it was running that mm -hmm. whole day afterward a bunch of people still going in and out I yeah. was in there yeah. in the Kent stream and stuff and there were some great moments I clipped out of there I'm like man this is really cool yeah and so I said it was it was fun it was a, a yeah. it was a bit of a magical day that day I don't know what was going on with it it was kind of yeah. weird uh, yeah look um, and I think you know wh where I'm sort of going with all this today is I, I don't want anyone to ever sort of want to understand it I think no. Sometimes you've just got to let it, let it be what it is. Just don't yeah, try don't to understand it. it. Just just embrace it and let it happen. And I think you mm -hmm. you know you'll move on to doing the things that you enjoy more. Um, it's a little bit like we were saying before about MIDI two last week. We we're saying how MIDI two is going to let us actually start playing our synths a bit more and l less fluffing about trying to set them up. Uh, you know, there'll be a point where we do enjoy setting them up. Don't get me wrong. I'm not yeah, gonna... there's. Yeah. But I think that there's a point where I just get so sick of having to reconfigure yeah. things. You know, yeah. it just it's yeah. annoying. Yeah. I just want to use it. Kent loves doing it yeah. though. He does it every few months. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Oh, I can't get it enough is, of it. It is a part of what makes us tick it though, isn't it? That that we have that need to reorganize at least every so often. Like it's a balance act between it's being funny super I, creative mm -hmm. and then being super methodical. I, yeah. I find I mean, that's, I, I, that's I, what I mean. The, the OCD struggle. Real, in, absolutely. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. a, it's a real yin and yang. Though. They it both is. Exist. It is. In the five years that I had my studio at the last house, you know, and I did, I changed it a little bit, but not not much. Moved stuff around a little bit. I am really looking forward to starting, literally starting from scratch with an empty room. Yeah. It's good fun. And I've already in my head, I'm thinking of, you know, I'll, I'll, I mean, he probably won't end up out, you know, I am going to, either Matt's going to pick up my stand from Kent or I will be coming back down to, to pick up my <laughs> yeah. stand. Probably oh, in the God, first week of moving. We've got to go to the back of the attic to get that. <laughs> yeah, we've got to go to the back of the attic this next time. Oh, yeah. my yeah. God. Honestly, Kent's attic is, is, the, is, the, is the best place. It's, it's wonderful because... <laughs> I thought I was. I thought my, my cable management was a problem. Thanks, <laughs> 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 blessing. Yes, that's not including the one thing there as well, isn't it? Like, oh, yeah. so, yeah. You only you, you only have to see someone else's mess to realise that the mess that you have isn't yeah. what's stopping you from yeah. making music. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. Yeah. <laughs> There's no excuses. Yeah. Just start. <laughs> 
Well, <laughs> the co- the cool thing about it is that I I feel like where we're at now in society is we know that we're not going to be millionaires from this. We know it's it's a labor of love. It's one of those hobbies that's expensive, but who cares? You're now released from any of those burdens about <laughs> you know thinking it. And hey, you never know. You may be one of these little lucky ducks that gets number one hit. That's great. And if you are, you know, we'd love to hear about it. Absolutely. But let's not let's not sort of constrain. Remember how I said about clenching before, right? Yeah, let's yeah, not yeah. clench ourselves into that world yeah. where we think this is where it's going to take us. Um, need to be the next I mean, trio. Da, 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 right? you so. need, <laughs> it's it's tricky, but you you need to leave some room to to succeed and to fail. Yeah, you got to realize mm-hmm. that's a few both, years ago, both before, part of it. Before mm. before the pandemic, I got a, my PRS statement, my, and and I'd been played on on Radio One Extra, and I couldn't believe that the song that they picked it was actually from this this pop group I played that I'd written the songs for, and. Mm. I was actually quite, and although I never ever heard it on Radio One Extra, no, no, and I don't no. know how they picked it. They played it probably two months in a, in a row. They paid quite a bit of money actually to the BBC. It was like three hundred quid for plays. So I was, you know, it was all right. Mm. So most I ever got on a on a PRS statement. Usually it's about three mm. p, you know. Um, mm. But I was actually dead chuffed the fact that they, they played me on Radio One, although it was Radio One Extra, <laughs> you know. And it was, I mean, it was quite a poppy song, but it was not really, really that commercial. Is, it, is that a Confucius saying? I bucks for a 20-second music bumper at work for some training videos. <laughs> so 20 if, seconds, not if, if, I mean, if, I... if your music is go played on, go, on Chris. if your music is played on, I'm just thinking of uh, uh, Confucius say, if your music is played on a channel and you weren't listening to it, was it really played at all? Uh, Did that it make is a, a good sound? point. The other is, usually, what happens when I, whenever I get a PRS statement, which isn't every quarter. The last one, I think I, I had something like 60 plays in Estonia and had obviously taken a, a small s- <laughs> snippet of music for a TV and, show. Okay, uh, but yeah. the, the amount that they paid was literally something like 20p for all those 60 plays. Okay. You know, so you could. <laughs> yeah. There's probably more money spent on the administration than there wasn't the getting on the artist. <laughs> That's yeah. why it's expensive. It's well, we get so little back. Next, next week, what I'd like anyone to do is, um, it do, you don't have to go off and create a track. You don't have to do that. But if you want to, you can. Um, we let's play some of this music that we're all creating, right? So ne- even okay. if you created it twenty years ago, I don't care, right? <clears throat> um, so share something with us next week, and we'll and we'll play it on the on the on the stream. <coughs> the only the only thing is that I've got to be careful of is uh, we can't copyright. put anything on here that is uh, commercial, yeah. commercially released. Yeah, it's copyright. Uh, on the streaming copyright. or otherwise, yeah. Yeah. No so, problem there with me. Yeah. <laughs> the commercial. Um, other than that, uh, you know, most of us have probably got some some B stuff on recording somewhere that we think Ooh, stuff on SoundCloud. I should, is... I should pop that out. Uh, do it. Pop it out. Right. You know? I'll send you some stuff for the week then. <laughs> yeah. You can absolutely. have some of the, the pop stuff I've been talking about. Well, you can have some of the Kate and the Question stuff then. Oh, awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, um, I've got uh, I've got to finish the show, guys, because uh, I've got to get up early tomorrow and do some stuff, unfortunately. I would like to sort of probably stick around for about another half an hour, but I can't, unfortunately. So, um, yeah. But is the pub on this afternoon? This afternoon for you, Kent. Is it? Uh... No, I think the it's the senior string tonight. Oh, it's Jake's three. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Um, I'm I'm out at the theatre this evening, so I'll the theater. Theater. catch up. Yeah, the theatre. Yeah, the 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 on a Saturday night. Yes. 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 Good God. <laughs> You gotta put the letters yeah, on. Opulent. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Opulent, dear boy. Opulent. Yeah. The yeah, Royal Festival going to see Carmina Piranha tonight. It's a very expensive ticket, but it's going to be a great show. So, yeah, did you get enough sleep, Andy? You, you sound like to me you only got about four hours sleep, didn't you? That's yeah, that's about it. Always the extra hour didn't make a difference. I just uh, I stayed up too late. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Someone I have told to take me a nice nap. Someone told me you need to get six hours a day minimum for the human mm-hmm. body to function. Properly. It's all individual. I mean, you know, Thomas Edison had four hours and he was fine. So. He yeah. was fine. Um, Depends on the age, though. Well. <laughs> was he? Yeah, was he fine? 
Well, I mean, he did steal some inventions, but I mean, he was awake and yeah. doing yeah. things. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Uh, well, many thanks to everyone who's been on the show today. I actually enjoy these kind of less topical, more chatty type shows. I think they're good fun because it sort of ebbs and flows to wherever we decide it to go to. Hello, Doggins. <laughs> is he giving you a big hint? Or she he said, this you a is hint? Siri. Oh, okay. Say, say hello, Siri. <clears throat> Give us a, oh, give us a kiss oh, Thank you. Yes, she's she's my uh, shadow, as it were, this one. Yeah. Oh. My dog's outside my door snoring at the moment. There's another two behind me, <laughs> all going, oh, she's your shadow, is she? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> We've got this problem at the moment in our house where the, where the front part of our house is, it's a big sort of void that goes up to two stories. Mm -hmm. So any noise that you make in the area it just literally reverberates oh, yeah. through the whole house, and our dog yeah. likes to sleep there and snore. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! It's a you snore know. chamber. <laughs> it's a snore <laughs> chamber. <laughs> Can you imagine a dog the snoring in like snoring in some Still. grand cathedral? <laughs> That's yes, what it exactly. sounds like. Yes. <laughs> I should you record it and play it to you guys. Yes. You'd love it. You need to get an opera singer. I love the little chasing rabbit streams of like. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's just the little tiny little barks that they have in the middle of the dreams. Yeah, it's so cute. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, legs are moving. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, enjoy the rest of your afternoons, evenings, whatever it is for your part of the world, people. And uh, um, please, please record. Please, please do it for me. Yes. Do it for yourself. Mm. Do it for yourself. We love you being creative. And thanks, Chatties, too, also. Thank you very much, Chatties. We love you as well. Oh, there we go. It's refreshed. Uh, wow, we've got Dazza in there. Catching you guys late for a change. Wow, you are. Mm. You watch it, mate. You got to watch it. Those little late-night gremlins will get you. Mm. Uh, we're finishing up anyway, guys. So I much appreciate you guys being part of the show, and we'd love to see you back next week if you can. Uh, if you can't, that's okay. You can always watch the replay. There's no pressure. Don't worry about that. Anyway... <laughs> Oodles. See you later. Bye. Have a good Bye one. Bye, guys. Bye, girls.